Awesome, yeah. This is a glo very globalized uh, Twitch chat. Okay, let's start. Gladiators versus Outlaw. So the, the, the score is 3 1. And I won 3. Gladiators essentially lost uh, 3 1. So I really wanted to look at this game because this was an upset. And I mentioned before that I like looking at upsets. Well, I'll repeat it myself again. I like looking at upsets. So if there's like 20, 10 games in a weekend, I would definitely uh, pick the upsets. Because essentially, upsets occur when, when, when something happened, or when the team didn't perform according to how they should have performed, or when the team improved massively. Or maybe it was like a team is really, really good at a specific meta. Whichever the reason, whatever the reason, or maybe even player conflict or, or, or staff conflict or whatever, right? But whatever the reason, it's bound to be interesting. Or it's bound, it's more likely to be interesting as opposed to like, you know, another match where maybe there's no upset. Uh, and of course, this is not to say that if there's no upsets, uh, those matches aren't interesting. It's just that I prefer looking at the upsets because I, I myself also want to know what's going on, right? I want to I want to know whether Outlaws have improved. I want to know why Gladiators lost to Outlaws, especially when Outlaws is, you know, regarded as one of the bottom three teams or at least the bottom five teams and Gladiators is regarded as obvious, uh, obviously like a, a pretty good team. So I want to see what's going on. I want to see what's going down. Also, the last time Gladiators played in a match, right? The last time Gladiators played in a match, uh, essentially, they fought Atlanta. So Gladiators fought Atlanta. Gladiators versus Atlanta. And they actually went 3-0, I think, right? 3-0, 3-0. So, you know, Atlanta is a decent team. So, uh, you know, if Gladiators won 3-0, and I, I looked at the... Uh, I mean, we reviewed this match. We actually reviewed this match on stream. And I mentioned how Gladiators played really well. They knew how to split. They knew how to flank, blah, blah, blah. So in, in this case, they did, like, the generally the same play style. Uh, and they tried to split and they tried to play like you know really aggressively in, in, in terms of taking many different angles. But this time they did not succeed. So we are going to take a look at why it didn't succeed. Even though you know they took like superior position but it didn't succeed. So we are going to look at why and how and you know how, how do you split. So today's uh, lecture, right? Today's lecture is all about splitting. We are going to talk a little bit all about splitting. So essentially like flanking, splitting, essentially taking off angle, right? And then when I, what I define as splitting and flanking, it's essentially anything that's not a six man. So if you're not six men standing together pushing one area, that's a split. So a split can happen in many, many different ways. A split could be a 5-1, 4-2, you know, you could have a 3-3, three, three, you could have like 4-1-1 one, one, where you have a bulk of the team together and then the rest are flanking, blah, blah, blah. So Gladiators is going to split a lot. We're, we're going to see Gladiators will split a lot. Yet, they're going to lose. So we're going to talk about essentially, like I said, the, the, the concept of splitting and when is it good to split, when is it bad to split and all the properties that you should split. Because, I mean, you think about it, if you guys go in a fight, right, and you guys are fighting like one versus two, right, you guys will lose. Not just because the other guys have four hands and you have two, but because one of them can come from your front and the other guy can come from right behind you. And then obviously you can only see the guy on the front. And even if you're really, really good at fighting, right, uh, you know, it's unlikely you can beat up the first guy without the second guy like beating you up because they're taking two different angles, right? So you're getting pincered and then hence you lose. And if you're fighting three people, right, it, it, it gets harder. Even if you are stronger than each of these one person, like, let's say you are fucking like, you are like 150 pounds and the other, or you're 200 pounds and the other three people are only 150 pounds. But if you think about it, right, three of them holding three different angles, they can still do some serious damage on you. So even if you're heavier and stronger than one person, the fact that they can split up, you know, and take different angle on you uh, means that you're going to lose. And even then, I mean, let's let's talk about in warfare, right? In, in China, in warfare, uh, there was a famous general that, that knew exactly uh, how to uh, command his troops and position his troops accordingly. So one one army had like, what, 50,000 members, and then the other army only had like maybe 40,000 members. But the other 40,000 split in a really, really smart way. One of them used terrain and it attacked from the forest, right? Uh, the other, uh, so let's say that's like 40, what, 50,000 troops. And then the enemy attacked from like three angles. One attacked from the forest, and then I was like, what, uh, 30,000 or something? Uh, what is 30,000? 20,000 or something, and then the other two guys attack from like uh, left and right angles, and it was like 10,000, 10,000, and then 50,000 lose. Because essentially, you know, when you hold angles like that, right, every single one of the person in the 40,000 squad may be equal to like two people or three people, and of course, 40,000 times three is like 120,000, right? So maybe the, the angle essentially creates threat. It creates threat, it creates variance, it creates a, a danger that is very, very hard to counter, especially in terms of in, in a hectic scenario and in terms of like warfare and fights. So, uh, without further ado, Gladiators split a lot, and we want to find out why, right? So we will take a look at uh, Gladiators uh, playing uh, in, in against Gladi uh, against Outlaws in the first map in Busan. So just, let's just skip all the way to the first fight and take a look at the first fight. Uh, uh, thanks for the follow. Reap Thai FPS military review. His uh, re military history re reviews would honestly be fantastic content. I'm sure on YouTube you guys will find some. It's not my specialty, but you know, in terms of esports, right? 
uh, it's actually very very similar. There are, especially in like 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 mobas and 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 team based activities. There are a lot of things that, yeah. There are, there's also why there are things called like war game, right? Essentially, it simulates a uh, warfare with games. So all these are very very interesting ways, and there are many many concepts in in esports and in in, in team based games that borrows a lot of fundamentals from warfare. <clears throat> Things like angles and splitting, right? When I was in the military and we had to learn this thing called fire movement and you will learn how to fire movement to the rear, fire movement to the side and fire movement to the forefront, which essentially means how we move from one area to another while maintaining like a really, really powerful attack line. So like I said, in warfare, you also learn how to split. So like, I mean, if it's important to learn how to split in war, obviously you, this is essentially simulated war, right? When a team fights another team. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about like, let's look at, uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the composition first. So Gladiator is gonna play a, a, a rush comp, and uh, essentially, like all both of these compositions, there are five different characters. The only characters that are similar is the Tracer, right? And Tracer, we know that Tracer wants to flank, right? The Tracer is essentially the flanker for both of these teams. So uh, let's look at how uh, Outlaws is gonna split. So Outlaws is gonna go for like a four, I'll say maybe a four-one-one split. So the Tracer is gonna play quite close to the team. I mean, essentially, these guys can see Tracer. So even though Tracer is splitting away from the team, it's not that far away, right? Because the Tracer can get his op from the Zen. So the Tracer isn't that isolated. I'll, I'll, I'll go so far to say that, you know, even though this is a split, uh, it, 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 it's a relatively tight split. And you can see the Tracer can return to the team and get the op really, really easily. Uh, the other guy is actually splitting for real. Like this guy, Linksa, uh, yeah, this is essentially a hard split. So you could say this is like a 4 1 1, or you could also say it's a 5 1. It doesn't really matter because, of course, in the course of like a fight, in the course of like a skirmish, a uh, 4 1 1 might become a 5 1, and then they might split again to 3 1 1. It's very mobile, right? Overwatch is like a very dynamic game. It's very mobile, and things change at, uh, at all point in time. So at this point in time, maybe it's like a 4 1 1, maybe, right? And then, and then, and then, and then Gladiators is actually splitting a whole lot more, if you guys take a look. So let's, let's count how many times Gladiators split, right? Okay, let's say Outlaws split 4 1 1 or 5 1, right? But they are the, the, the 4 1 1, they're relatively tight together. So it's kind of like a 4 1, but it's more like a 5 1, I guess. So Gladi let's look at Gladiators split. So we have Ryan, Lucio, and May standing over here, right? And this is the main group, right? For example, Outlaws is the main group as well. Like these four guys are the main group, right? The four Musketeers, these guys are the main group. And Gladiators is a main group here, and they are playing a Lucio, so they get to speed and they get to like, you know, cross distance really, really quickly. Uh, so 3% here, 1% here, Anna over here, and then you have the Tracer over here, and you have the Winston over here. So this is an extreme split. You have, is this is literally the 3-1-1-1, uh, one, 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 essentially. Because essentially, you, you one, one team is 3-1-1-1, one, 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 that's Gladiators, and uh, Houston is... Yeah, let's let's just call it five one. Uh, let's just not call it four one one. Since the tracer is so close, and the tracer can get healed from heal from Zen really easily. But the reason why this is a three one one, not like a four two, not a four one one or anything, is because if you look at the nature of like a gladiator's position, any of this group cannot get that much resources from another group. So for example, it's unlikely that these guys can get healed by Anna because Anna is like playing like it's it's not easy to heal the guy. It's hard for Anna to heal any of these guys here. Also hard for Anna to heal the Tracer, and hard, impossible for Anna to heal like uh, Winston, essentially. And it'll take some time for Anna to move into a position where he can heal them, and Anna essentially will have to put himself in a risky position. So, Gladiator's doing the 3-1-1. So, uh, I mean, so the, the next question we want to come to is, is, is essentially, you know, it's is splitting more better or is splitting less better? I mean, it, it generally depends. So, here I want to ask you guys a question, right? I have it here in my PowerPoints like a moment before disaster, what is wrong? I want you guys to tell me, right? If any of you guys uh, you think about it a little bit, but what do you guys think is wrong here? What, what, do, you think, what do you think will go wrong here? Or you, I mean, there might be more than one answer as well, but what is the danger for one of these teams? What do you guys think? <clears throat> Thanks for the follow, Lazy Z and Dogo O W. Topi Doki, really make me drink water. I will try to find a water bottle. But what, what do you guys think? Oh, I find some water. What is wrong here? What is the what is the disaster? I wrote moments before disaster. That implies that there's a disaster. So, what's the disaster? Maybe I drink some coffee. I did not sleep last night, so I feel like coffee would be really really helpful. Anyway, you guys tell me. You guys write down your answers. I'm gonna boil some water, okay?
Those better be some good answers, guys. Let's take a look at some of the answers. Uh, who do you think is going to be the NA Finals for the June tournament? <laughs> I have, I'm not sure yet. We will see. Ask me that question again on, on the on the on the last. Wait, is it already the tournament? Fuck, it's already the tournament. Jesus Christ. Okay, let me see. The position of Linksa. Hmm. Positioning of Linksa. Okay, interesting. Let's see whether there are other answers. A uh, Johnny die. Uh, a monkey dies. Johnny dies. I I I read two different. Two different statement. I think gladiators are spread rather thin, and and, and outlaws could attack as a group, and Anna or the Winston can and pro proceed to roll the team for. Oh, okay, Dan Dante maybe can pick OGE. Hmm. Let's see, Lillian official. Uh, official. I would think Houston could kill someone before the three group manages to get to them. It's gonna eat o OG alive. The gladiators are all over the map. Blah blah blah. OG is isolated from his healers. Gladiators Anna and Monkey can't really do much. Massive travel time. He's dead pretty much, can't get help from his team because he's too split. A lot of right answers. So you guys, you guys would make good coaches, right? So, okay. So, oh, at least good anal analysts, right? Analysts and coaches are, uh, are two different things. Coaches essentially uh, plays a different role. Analysts look at data and sometimes just isolate uh, reasons, but coaches essentially need to make uh, on-the-fly decisions on many, many different things. Okay, anyway, it's not... I'm not here to talk about the difference between coaches and analysts, but essentially, if you guys were analysts, that answer would be totally right. And I saw a lot of uh, the answers are all correct, essentially. So, when you take off angles, right? Uh, I, I wrote a moment before disaster, but yes, when you take off angles like this, uh, the weakness of off angles are that uh, you don't, like I said, you can't help each other, right? The strength of off angle is, of course, you get like a lot of uh, things done. And essentially, if you. Jesus, is the kettle already boiling? If you, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so those of you guys who say OG is gonna die, you guys are essentially correct because OG will lose the one on one, like essentially, uh, especially when they have tracer. There are moments where you can play like this. Like if you want to play like this, there are moments where you can, uh, and those moments will be moments where if outlaws composition, they don't have anyone that can match uh, character. So for example, if they were playing. Um, Ash and May, or if they were playing Ash and Widow, or if they were playing Ash and even Ash and even Ash and Reaper, and you guys might be thinking, why? Why like, Reaper counters Winston, right? No, not because not not really, because if the Reaper moves over here, right, the Winston can just quickly kite the Reaper and start like pressing S. The problem with Tracer is that Tracer could. Uh, see the Winston, shoot the Winston, Winston jumps back and the Tracer has two blinks and can chase the Winston and continue poking him down. So the uh, Winston can kite essentially like almost any DPS that they, they, they try to play. But uh, Tracer would be one of that character that's unkiteable. Not to mention that Tracer is, is impossible to win in one once. So yeah, we almost... There are some characters that will probably like harass OG and kill him, or and not maybe not kill him, but like make him really low on HP. But Tracer is probably one of the few characters that not not only can he harass OG, he can chase OG down. So the moment Tracer knows OG is here, OG is dead, right? There might be some characters. Let's say Reaper is over here and shoot the uh, uh, OG twice. Maybe OG can maybe maybe right maybe turn around, he get a shot, maybe jumps or some shit and maybe he's like one hp and hobbles away maybe maybe but probably reaper kills him as well but tracer impossible to run away impossible he has three blinks you blink one time clip him to half hp you zap the guy yeah you, you just die there's no way you can survive uh the reason why gladiators play like this and i wrote moments without disaster right and i showed the pov of everything so the reason why uh, every gladiators play like this and especially why shask play like that uh, is because he wants to nade. So it's actually, you know, in perfect play, right? What, what Gladiators wanted to do, I, I assume, right? And I, 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 I might be wrong here, is that they wanted these guys to clash. Okay, wait, actually, to know this, we need to go all the way up to the, to the, to the, to the, to the first, to the first part of the Busan. So I'm gonna pause it here. I mentioned this before when I was coaching, uh, when I talked to you guys about Busan, right? Map theory on Busan. Uh, for Busan, uh, so if you play two different composition, there will always be one composition that wants to fight. 
and the other composition that wants to play slow. So for example, this composition has a Lucio, so the Lucio wants to rush, right? And Outlaw's composition, you can see the Bep Zen. So essentially, this is a poke comp. You have like the Ash. Uh, these guys don't have an Ash. It doesn't have like a Sniper. They have a Sniper. They have like a, two range tanks. Uh, they have uh, two range supports as well. So these guys are essentially poke comp, and these guys are essentially rush composition. So the rush composition wants to play into small space and just fight. Fight close, fight hard, that kind of thing. Outlaws obviously doesn't want to do that. So if like gladiators push up by here, I mean, would Outlaws actually want to push up here? No, this is gonna get fucked, right? Outlaws is gonna be oh, so maybe maybe somewhere here, and then you know, then then the gladiators will be somewhere like here already because they have the Lucio, and then they will surround from multiple angles, and it's only a matter of time before Outlaws die, right? And if Zen and Baptist has no space, let's say if Zen is like over here and Baptist is over here and they can't see shit, it's actually Zen and Baptist can't do anything, right? Zen and Baptist really really uh, uh do really well, like really excel when they have hard, long sidelines, so maybe they stand in this position, they can shoot like, what, like across the whole map. Now that's when Zen and Baptist is strong. But when Zen and Baptist doesn't get to do that and it gets confined in a very small space, they essentially lose. That's also why Gladiator is going to choose uh, the right side to push out all, because their composition is, uh, is essentially a composition that can fight fast and wants to fight in fast and enclosed area. So they take the path of like, you know, the shortest distance. Uh, Outlaws want to, wants to avoid them, so they're gonna, you know, take a different different path. So, if you look at Gladiators, right, they are actually all together, and uh, at this point in time, they'll start splitting, and then they'll leave the NR here, right? And this is, I assume, a set play. I'm gonna assume it's a set play. I think it's highly unlikely that, you know, that that, the ant, that, that, that Shaz decides to play this impromptu, but I might be wrong. He, he might have decided to play this impromptu, right? If he did it, then okay, interesting choice. But it's actually... Uh, if they split up over here, like what Shaz did, he will essentially Shaz is hiding, right? Hiding the information that he's he's not staying with the team, and he's gonna uh, he's gonna rotate maybe yeah somewhere here. Right? He's, he's kind of hiding, right? Uh, the enemy doesn't really see him. He's using line of sight, and no one can no one gets to see him. So Houston Outlaws obviously can see that you know uh, Gladiators is rushing. They maybe they don't see the NR, but you know maybe maybe just. Yeah, they, they don't know where the INR is hiding. Maybe they do, but essentially, it's not always easy to get perfect information all the time. So maybe they don't know where the INR is hiding, right? And they want to rotate away. They don't want to stay here because obviously these guys are going to, to rush them. So, you know, Houston, there is a chance that Houston's going to rotate away from the rush and play somewhere like here, and probably somewhere like here, somewhere like here, right? Then it's harder for uh, gladiators to rush. And Anna, right, your sneaky chest here wants to like pick them and nade from this angle, right? Nade, uh, you can nade from here to here. If you want, if you think if you think they're over here, you can nade from here to here. You can even stand over here and nade uh, essentially this angle if they're they are, they are, they are standing over here. So I assume that's what Shaz wants to do. And while this is happening, of course, the tracer is setting up, right? So once a nade goes down, the tracer is gonna bump, bump, bling in and, and try to clip someone. And of course, the Winston is setting up an angle to try to uh, attack uh, outlaws over here. So all in all, it's 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 technically technically in a perfect world, this this is perfect, right? So if you nade someone because you don't know the NI is there, in a perfect world, you wouldn't know the NI is there. Then NI gets a nade, the, the tracer flanks and hit them. The Winston hits here, and then of course the, the rest of the team, the three man squads, you know, clashes into this this team, and then of course a Shaz will probably play somewhere here, gets to heal, gets to heal the. Three-man squad fighting in here gets to heal the Winston, gets to heal these guys. It's, it's it's essentially perfect play. In fact, maybe maybe uh Shaz didn't even want to open the fight with Nate. Maybe maybe he wants to open the fight with Winston jumping in, Tracer going in, and then you know maybe the the, the squad hitting in, and then you Nate, and that Nate will essentially not only anti the enemy and the, the entire enemy team, but it will heal gladiators at the same time. So you, th there's a possibility that Shaz doesn't even want to Nate early and use the Nate soft like to kill two birds with one stone. So essentially, gladiators play is very, 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 very greedy, right? Very, very greedy and essentially plays towards a perfect scenario of what they think is going to happen. Uh, all right. One second as I get some coffee. Coffee's probably like a... What would we do without coffee? The only, one of the only legal drugs in the world. <clears throat> only half the student population would fail, fail their exams. Maybe the other half would, uh... what the hell is this coffee creamer? Coffee classic. So let's try it with the creamer and without sugar first. Okay. Uh, make me drink water. I'm, I'm just gonna drink. Uh, yeah, Shaz will not get hot combo because uh, I, I the the whole the whole set play from Gladiators 
essentially uh, relies on the enemy not knowing where Shaz is. Because if they know where Shaz is, of course, they can just run towards him and hot him. Right? And they can just send a tracer towards him, all that kind of thing. But you rely on Shaz not knowing it. That's why the set play has Shaz hiding, you know, splitting up during the pillar. So if this was a set play, which I'm like 60-70% sure it's a set play from the gladiators, it's a smart set play, essentially. And it's unlikely that they will know where Shaz is. No, Shaz is not the weakness of this, this thing. But the weakness of this thing is, I think you guys already mentioned it many times, it's OGE. As long as the enemy has Tracer, uh, Winston essentially cannot set up alone. It's very, very dangerous for set up alone. I mean, if you want to set up alone, maybe you can, but essentially you need to execute the strategy as quickly as possible before they know the Winston is over there or before they send the Tracer to the Winston, right? So the moment, the moment uh, the, 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 the enemy is in position, wait, fuck. The moment the enemy is in position, just realize the, the copy creamer looks like cocaine. Uh, before the enemy is in position, so I'll show maybe some like, like this, right? The, 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 these guys, this guy should already be somewhere like here. So if they fight as quickly as possible, right? If let's say the fight already occurs and, and you know, Gladiators is already like somewhere here clashing, then this Tracer has to make a decision. This Tracer has to say, mm, do I want to, you know, shoot OG and kill OG or do I need, want to help the team? And essentially, if you look at this team, look at this team. The, the Bab, Zen, Orisa and Sigma, it's... You know, it's killable, you know, you could kill the Zen, you could kill the Bab, you could kill the Sigma, all this is vulnerable, right? I mean, the Zen is the DPS, but remember what we talk about? Zen and Baptiste wants long sideline, so like, spamming down the angle. But once the enemy is like, in the midst and just swinging, charging, just fucking them up, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to, uh, it's a lot harder for them to do stuff, right? Zen has to like, fucking find cover, probably Zen wants to like, maybe move behind cover over here, or maybe like, try to run as far as quick possible. So if the fight occurs over here, Zen is like, at least a safe position like over here, right? If the fight occurs over here, Zen wants to be somewhere over here. So the, the thing is, if Winston wants to like, set up in greedy angles, then essentially the execution has to be very, very fast. And it's unlikely that Gladiators is going to be able to clash that fast. Because if you think about it, right, how far did Gladiators travel? They did this. They did this. They did all the way like that. All the enemy essentially just walk like that. So even with a Lucio, that's a really, really uh, long way. And, and uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, that, I mean, technically, that's, uh, there's, there's even a shorter path. You could, uh, the, the shortest path is probably, actually, no, this, this is actually already the shortest path. Because if you walk over here, Right, that's not, you can't access, the enemy plays over here, you can't access them. So the only way to force them off the bridge is to, yeah, to, to, to essentially control this point. And the enemy will have to like, you know, just like, give up the bridge and play like somewhere here. Because they can't stay on the bridge. If you stay on the bridge, you can rush them. So essentially the enemy will just kite this direction, while the, while the gladiators will have kite like really, really quick, far. So that, at least, I mean, I'm overcomplicating things, right? Essentially the summary is that OG will not be able to execute his jump, will not be able to execute his dive before LH Cloudy uh, reaches where he needs to reach, which is like somewhere over here, right? He will not be able to uh, dive because they need, they, they essentially need to clash. If, if OG is finding a tracer, at the very least, you want to like, you know, you want at least like a 5v5 with the Anna nading. So if Anna nades this guy, uh, these guys, and then the, the, the tracer is fighting uh, the Winston, and even if the Winston die, maybe they win because, you know, you still have like a 5v5, right? You will have like maybe, um, the gladiators clashing three people over here tracer over here and over here it's still essentially a 5v5 but they're not even going to get that because before even you get the 5v5 right the winston's going to die so yeah also we are forgetting one more person we're forgetting one more person so some of you guys said that linker actually is in the wrong position not really because linker is actually choosing a really really good moment uh, to pick out to pick out essentially so if you look at when linker uh, comes out right uh, we, we can take a look at when linker was in the style of the fight so, you know, we, we'll take a look at this. He comes out, oh, he sees the enemy and, you know, Big Goose shoot him a couple of times. So, actually, Big Goose know his, knows he's there. So, uh, technically, right, Big Goose knows that there are five people here and there's Linkser in the back. So, at this point in time, the Gladiators have two choices. They could chase Linkser down and probably they'll get to kill Linkser. In fact, I think that is actually the battle play. But I think Gladiators is uh, going to go for option two, which is they're going to execute their set play. So instead of chasing Linkser, because Linkser can't escape, they have a Lucio and Linkser technically definitely can't escape. He might be able to hide and stuff. Maybe maybe if the enemy comes, uh, Linkser could like, I don't know, like do something funky, like fucking uh, coach gun all the way to the top. But probably he'll still die to the enemy since he, he's, I mean, the enemy knows he's somewhere there. right? But I mean, Gladiators is not going to make that move. Right? Gladiators is going to choose option two, which is that they're going to try to rush the enemy team as quickly as possible before Linkser gets into play position which i think is the inferior option because obviously it takes a long time for gladiators to rush them because he has to they have to rush the the, the opposite side and linkser can just you know set up so yeah so <laughs> essentially gladiators is gonna commit and linkser is gonna you know yeah be behind them he's gonna get like he's gonna force the ice block with the with the dynamite essentially 
It's gonna miss a couple of shots, but technically could have killed the May there. So yeah, and, and of course the enemy is gonna be very, very low. So not only is the Winston losing the 1v1, right? Not only is the Winston losing the 1v1, uh, no one is safe, right? Shaz isn't safe because uh, you know, he's losing to the whole, he's not losing the hot combo, but it's actually the enemy is pushing Shaz. And not only is the enemy pushing Shaz, right? This kills two birds with one stone. What does it kill? Uh, it, it, it essentially uh, kills Shaz, rotates away from the enemy, and also kites away from the Winston. So no longer can the Winston just like comes out and like start zapping people over here. He has to like make a jump and obviously he's already low. And uh, and, and of course like Shaz has to move away and can't heal the guys that's getting shot by Linkser. And then these guys are also like rotating away, like Houston is also rotating away from these guys. So, you know, it's easy for Houston to play this. That, that's the thing, like, for, for Houston it's fucking easy, like, they, they don't even need to think about it, just move away from the Lucio. Gladiators is doing something that's really complicated and technically like a very powerful set play, but uh, it, it, it doesn't fully work here because of like the reasons I talked about, right? You play a Winston against a Tracer, not gonna cut it. So probably, I think Gladiators probably just shouldn't, just shouldn't execute the set play. If they see the Winston, if they see the Tracer, Maybe do something else. Because at the end of the day, this is a cheese. So maybe it's like a calculated cheese. Maybe maybe it isn't that bad. And maybe I'm being too cynical. But I think a really good team will just send a tracer for the Winston. I think it's way too greedy. What I think Gladiators should have done like way earlier is maybe just do a 5-1 split. So I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about like that. What I think maybe they could have done. So it would be less risky. It wouldn't be a cheese. It would just be less risky. So I think, I mean, the other option is that Anna doesn't split with the team. Winston doesn't split with the team. So at this point in time, they just don't split. You have the the, the, the five people over here, uh, Winston, and the only person flanking is the Anna. Uh, just not Anna, sorry, the Tracer. So only the Tracer gets to flank, and then these guys play as five. So, you know, even if the like, enemy Tracer comes and, and harass these guys, these guys uh, win. Right? So if Gladiators actually did this, and they see Linkser, and they rush Linkser, they would have killed Linkser. Right, and then the tracer will probably fight the uh, Dante one on one, and probably for Kev's, uh, for Bird Ring, right? He'll try not to fight like a long one on one because this tracer has a Zen, right? This tracer has Rockers giving him up, and of course Bird Ring has nothing, right? But Bird Ring essentially will not get any heals, so Bird Ring just plays really really safe and tries to pull Dante away from the team, right? So Bird Ring maybe plays somewhere like instead of like playing really really close, like instead of Bird Ring playing like somewhere like here, probably Bird Ring wants to play maybe like somewhere like 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 here, right? So as Gladiators play this way. You know, let's 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 look at the top. There. Let's look at like a position like that, so it's easier. So as gladiators move, you know, against the enemy team as five five man unit, or anyway, or this way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, tracer will be playing somewhere like here, right? So Dante has to choose if Dante wants to hard commit towards the tracer, he'll move very really far away from the team, and you know, it, it essentially he'll he move far away from the five v five that's gonna occur, right, over over this side. And if Dante doesn't play. In, that far and let's say Dante play close to the team right so instead of playing over here as Dante plays like maybe here like option one right he plays over here then essentially even you know essentially Burring will have more space Burring wouldn't need to play here anymore right Burring can push up and play a more aggressive angle like maybe like here right so essentially uh, Dante will have two choices you could mark Burring right but lose the opportunity to help the team without at least using a lot of blinks but the thing is if, if Dante tries to like blink to his, his his team like blink blink and try to help his team essentially what happens to Dante is that you know he, he has to use like a couple of blinks and then it's uh Bird Ring probably wins the one on one because he can just shoot and obviously uh, you have to give the op to, to the harmony op to Tracer so the more resources that you know outlaws have to give to Tracer or the further outlaws play their Tracer away the more likely gladiators are going to win the 5v5 right but obviously gladiators in this in this example gladiators is not going to uh, do the 5v5 they are going to do this overly to me overly complicated split which I just think is not a great uh, split it would be decent if like I said they didn't have a Tracer right if they play this as a, like a May I think this is actually a, a good cheese but uh, against the Tracer you are essentially like betting on the fact that Dante doesn't know what they are trying to do right and I, I'm, I know Houston is not like you know they're, they're like not a good ranking right now but at the end of the day they're still an overwatch league team and you know you're relying on another team to make mistakes which means I guess it means two things right I don't want gladiators learn this set play without thinking through the limitations of this set play which means that it's too rigid I think I said that gladiators uh, weakness in the past was actually rigidity right gladiators had powerful set plays and I talked about this maybe I think two weeks ago where I pointed out a lot of examples where gladiators were was powerful in set plays and powerful in conceptual coaching but a little bit too rigid and that's also probably why they, they tend to lose to teams like Boston Uprising like four or five times in a row even though when Boston Uprising isn't a very good like that isn't very strong right now Boston is at its core a very flexible and very 
you know, hard to predict team. And then Gladiators has like, I don't think they have actually won a single uh, match against uh, Boston. And I know because I, we played Boston, when I was the coach of Gladiators, we played Boston once and they kind of like fucked us over in terms of like, in terms of strategy for the first cough maps. And yeah, but anyway, it doesn't matter. That's like a different lifetime. So yeah, that's Gladiators weakness. And I think in these, in these set play, right? Uh, in these like, you know, in this play Gladiators make against Outlaw, we, we, we kind of see a little bit of that Gladiators as a little bit too rigid. Have a set play, but you know, essentially that set play doesn't quite work against this composition, but uh, kind of fucked up, uh, and kind of didn't change away from the set play. And essentially you cannot, you, you can't just teach one single set play and make, say, you got to do this 10 out of 10 times. Sometimes composition is going to change, sometimes you just got to adapt. So that's really, really important too. Okay. How do you take your coffee, Mr. God? I do not know. So this is like a... Sp Ah, this is fine. I don't like too much sugar in my coffee. Okay. It's not the creamer. <laughs> Linkser can just spot chess and then uh, they rush. I mean, yeah, I mean, technically, that's also like a second thing why it fucked up, right? Because Big Goose already spotted, uh, Big Goose spotted Linkser, but Linkser also spotted chess. But technically, if you ask me, uh, I think it's more likely that Linkser gets rushed before chess get rushed. But at the end of the day, I guess... <laughs> Yeah, because Link, uh, Big Goose already spotted Chess, remember? Big Goose spotted, uh, sorry, Big Goose already spotted Linkser really early. Like at this moment, Big Goose already spotted Linkser, and I really think they should have just rushed Linkser. Uh, like, uh, let me just show it. Yeah, wait a minute. See, like Big Goose did spot Linkser, and shot Linkser a couple of times. So. It, Imagine if they speed boost towards Linkser right now. You think you think Linkser doesn't die? Linkser, there's no way Linkser doesn't die here. He dies. So the fact that you know, like like Gladiators ignored the set play and uh, ignored Linkser and continue pushing is, I think at least in my eye, evidence that they just went for the set play instead of like adapting to the scenario and just killing Linkser. <clears throat> okay. Thanks for the follow, Muk Makni Maknik O W. Yeah, the angles outlaws, which was essentially uh originally a three prong attack ended up reducing to one as they kite here uh for our loss i mean uh, it's essentially still a two prong attack right because linkser will always hold this angle and and our loss even though they kite they're not gonna yeah so we can we can just watch this so the, the essentially the dante, dante would you know, Dante at no point in time will ever want to play with his team. You always want to like, you know, poke at Gladiator's backline. Remember that Big Goose and, and, and Big Goose is always splitting his team, and then the rest of Gladiators is split. So Dante actually has a lot of targets, right? Let's look at who can Dante can uh, who Dante needs to focus. Dante could e focus these guys here, like this these guys here, and it's gonna be hard to protect anyone. You could shoot the tanks and 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 all the Ryan, and essentially you can shoot anyone that the the the, the Zen discords. And remember, these guys can't get hit by Shaz because Shaz is split up. So anyone you shoot here, it's gonna be significant damage because it's hard to heal remember big goose is on speed because they need to clash right if big goose goes for heals then they're not even going to win at all because you know they're going to get heals and they're going to lumber their way towards outlaws there's no way that uh gladiator is going to win so big goose needs to speed amp and then try to keep it on speed and try to at least close the distance for a proper fight and of course the, the, yeah that's not gonna that's not really gonna happen dante can even right dante can even uh, you know, he could go for these guys, he could even go for shares, right, if Dante wanted to, and if Dante had the good enough position, he could just hunt down shares. If, if Dante right now goes for, for, tries to go for shares, or at least in like, a little bit closer to shares, shares easily dies, because obviously shares has no one to peel for him. Because he's alone, Big Goose can't do anything. The shares main protection was the fact that no one knew shares was there, or at least the assumption that no one knew shares was there. Who else can they have gone for? Uh... I mean, just now, just now, I think just now Dante, uh, sorry, just now Bird Ring was playing alone. So technically, Dante can also go for Bird Ring because they don't have any Zen, they don't have any Brigitta. So there's no one healing Bird Ring as well, except a Lucio who obviously is on speed and an Anna that can't heal. So essentially, uh, Dante now has his, the easiest job of his life. He can he go for anyone and it essentially would be the right target. So, yeah. So, oh, also I forgot to mention, right, Kester doesn't have Ice Block because he used he used Ice Blocks just, uh, against Linkser just now. So you can see he still has 5 seconds to Ice Block. So Linkser is also having his time of his life, right? You can see, if you look at the, the, the outcharge here, I mean, R Rappel is essentially healing his team. But you can see uh, Dante has 51% and Linkser has 25%. You know, Linkser is just shooting, 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 he's in no danger whatsoever. <clears throat> it's a really easy job for Linkser. Linkser and Dante are already at 40 and 60%, right? So... <clears throat> in fact, probably Linkser could have killed Kefster even earlier. Remember, he missed one shot on Kefster when Kefster was rotating. So he, he probably could have killed Kefster even earlier, to be honest. 
So uh, Outlaws is going to win this fight uh, pretty easily here. Right, and, 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 and we, we, we learn already the first the first mistake that uh, gladiators make, right? They, they had a set play, they forced themselves to go through the set play. So, okay, so we'll look at the second scenario. What do you think of them playing Winston Ryan? I think it works. I think it's 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 a weird composition, but essentially if you want to rush with it, I think it's it, 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 it works actually. Just gladiators didn't play it really well. Uh, I'm not a coach that says we you can only play meta and then you can not you can't play anything else. If a comp is reasonable and plays towards the win condition, I think it can be a powerful composition, especially if it has a little bit of cheese, right? But uh, yeah, so I, I don't think it's like a horrendous com composition at all. Why didn't Gladiator split Symmetra best in here, huh? Hey, real team one. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I, I I mentioned many times. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about. I mean, if that is the real team, but essentially, real team one is uh, the other assistant coach of Gladiators in twenty nineteen, and I actually attribute a lot of the a lot of like the the, the things I learned from o Overwatch uh, to team, because essentially when I had questions then, you know, uh, in in Gladiators, I would ask team like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think? Of this? And I bounced a lot of ideas off team, and I learned a lot from team. A lot of my the fundamentals that I know today, you know, started uh, from from this man, real team one. So it helped me a lot. Because when I joined Gladiators, uh, my, my main, all my experience was from Contenders. And I'll tell you guys one thing, right? Contenders back in 2018 was a far cry from Contenders currently, right? The Contenders team now, are, I'll, I'll be honest, they're they are pretty good, especially like the top two or three teams. And even Atlanta Academy like last year. But when I was coaching Contenders, I think th during that time, there wasn't as many like great Contenders team. And essentially, coaches in Contenders weren't as good. I think nowadays, there are a lot... A lot of great, not just great contenders players, but great contenders coaches. But uh, yeah, in the past, definitely not as good. So yeah, team helped me a lot in, in bringing up my knowledge to Overwatch League level. Okay. Uh, I hope you read that before seeing it was me first. <laughs> Thanks for following Spectre OW. All right. Play to learn OW says it. Yeah, anyway, that's Tim. But anyway, he retired, right? So he coached two years in Gladiators and retired. Just like me, I coached I coach for two years, right? Once in Gladiators and Justin, and then I retired. That tells you about the, the average uh, the average job span for Overwatch coaches, Overwatch League coaches. And I think we, we both retired for a very similar reason as well. Right? When I resigned from Justice, I I, I was quite tired, and, and essentially I wanted to break and just you know pursue other things in life. And I think, I suspect, yeah, I think I know team's reason is quite similar to mine. Anyway, it's, it's a tiring job, but fulfilling job. It's it's a dream job, very fun job. Yeah, but anyway, all right, let's continue. Let's continue. Not here to sell sell my job. Okay, not that's not not my business anymore. Okay, where are we? So. Outlaws has the has the essentially Outlaws has the point right. So they remember they are still poke composition and Gladiators is still a rush composition. So and this is the part where I really I'm watching it and I'm I'm wondering why. So remember because Gladi of course Outlaws is gonna uh, obviously range them right. Outlaws is not gonna play close because they are they are range unit. And what do we talk about? If you play Baptiste and Zen, you want to hold long side lines. You want to pick the place that allows you to you know allow make the enemy run towards you and then make the enemy run towards like a, a huge distance towards you. And you poke down the shield. You poke down the shield. You discard the enemy tanks. You you just make life really really hard for them. So when Gladiators reaches Outlaws, right? What Outlaws want to make sure it happens is Gladiators has have low health, have no shield, have low cooldown so I'll, I'll give you guys an example of what i mean so let's say gladiators pushes out here right and this is maybe i don't know how many meters this is it's hard to see how many meters this is when there's no humanoid figure so it's kind of hard to estimate Let, let's say this is like i don't know like how many feet do you guys think this is 30 feet i have no idea fucking hell let's let's use 30 feet right so i think of things in meter but i i did work in america for two years so let's 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 not let's not use the metric system <laughs> we, we will we will go with the american style of uh, measurement 30 feet so, uh, 30 feet, right? Over these 30 feet, uh, what Outlaws want to do is poke down Ryan Shell, maybe force OG to use Bubble early. Of course, they want they also want to poke the Gladiators to make sure they are low on health. They want to, uh, let's say, they want to, sh they want maybe Shares to, they, they want to force Shares to use like Bionate really early uh, to heal his teammate instead of using it aggressively. Maybe they want uh, Bird Ring to, you know, essentially use his recall. If you poke Bird Ring a couple of times, he's forced to recall to get health. I mean, or maybe it's also hard for Shares to heal him because they don't have a Zen, they don't have a Brikita. And maybe you can force Kevster to use his Ice Block or use his Wall early. So instead of maybe walling off like the Orisa and the Sigma, maybe, maybe they will force Kevster to use Wall early for like, I don't know, like, 
suboptimally. So if you get to force gladiators, you know, to, to be low on HP, to use their cooldown suboptimally, then Outlaws essentially would have like won the neutral fight. So before the fight even occurred, right? Before the clash even occurred, before people even get to a distance where Reinhardt can swing anyone, you can essentially force gladiators to, you know, to lose a lot a bunch of health and use a bunch of cooldowns. And essentially even if gladiators finally reach outlaws and they start to fight and start to clash, right? If gladiators have no cooldowns, no speed boost, no war, no ice block, the chance of uh, gladiators winning is very, very low. Because all, as all this is going now, Outlaws is going to obviously discard the tanks, right? Uh, of course, they have hot, so they can pull gladiators uh, away. So gladiators might be running, and then you know they get put back with the hot, blah blah blah. They can do it. They can do it in, like different ways to fuck up gladiators. So the one thing I'm really uncomfortable with, and I'm not sure why, is is this thing. And I, I don't know whether it's like a chess mistake or it's like a set play or something. If it's a set play, it's, a, it's not a smart set play. And if it's a chess mistake, then it's it's unfortunate because chess is a really good end. So it, this might just be a slip up. From Shaz, right? But what happened was, uh, Shaz, okay, also, wherever Shaz go, Shaz should be sticking with the team. Because I just mentioned Gladiators need to rush, right? So you need heals to sustain that rush. So Gladiators will move out, and technically what Shaz, where Shaz should be is behind the Reinhardt shield. So he wants to hug the tanks of Gladiators, allow the tanks to protect him, right? He doesn't want to stray too far behind, right? If, if you guys are playing fucking like rank in Overwatch and you want to stray far behind, maybe the Tracer isn't good enough to fight you one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe the Tracer takes too long to kill you, and if it takes too long to kill you, it's almost equivalent to losing a one-on-one. -on -one. Because you know, in Overwatch, uh, every single second counts, and a Tracer fighting an Ana without any pills for the Anna, the Anna should die, and if he's an Overwatch League level Tracer, the Anna will die. So essentially, the Anna has to be really careful and generally like stick close to the team during rotations, right? If you, if you slack off a little bit, maybe you don't die in your rank games, but you know, you will die in Overwatch League. So, it, Chess was actually a little bit slow here, and he actually didn't commit to the rotation. And maybe he was scared of the Zen, maybe he was scared of like the Sigma, blah blah blah. But even then, if he was scared of it, even more so, he should be behind the, the enemies, uh, his Reinhardt shield, right? And, and of course, at this point in time, Big Goose is going to, you know, use speed and try to rotate towards the enemy team. But at this point in time, Dante is going to go for Shaz, and he's going to go for Shaz with the Harmony Orb, you can see. So Shaz can no longer rotate, and they're going to go. So, Gladiators has two choices. Uh, they could try to peel back for Shaz. In fact, they should peel back for Shaz, because if Shaz dies here, it, you know, Gladiators couldn't, can't, uh, Gladiators essentially wouldn't be able to win this fight if Shaz died. But the question is, I'm curious, is why didn't Shaz rotate? Was it because you're scared? Was it like an individual slip up? Or, man, this was my like second theory, which I'm not sure. Did Shaz want to play? Because he didn't see the Tracer, right? The Tracer was like playing somewhere like here, so they, did, they didn't see the Tracer. I'm assuming, I'm wondering whether Shaz actually played here to try to get a variance nade. So what, what variance nade is like, for example, gladiators fight, right? And they start fighting over here or something. And I was wondering where Shaz wanted to take like an angle to nade the enemy team. Because if you look at gladiators' uh, uh, ultimate, they have zero ultimate. So, you know, they ha essentially have to win off like, some other method. So maybe he wanted to sleep or nade someone here while gladiators, uh, you know, push uh, outlaw. So I was wondering whether that, that happened. But I'm not sure. So I don't know whether this was Shaz's slip up or it was like a set play or, or, or some, some something. But whatever the case, if it was like a set play and if Shaz decided to do this, yeah, Shaz is gonna die because, yeah, I mean, gladiators is already gonna rush. So unless they, they come back for Shaz, but even then, if gladiators go all the way back for Shaz, then we gladiators will essentially lose HP. They would they will still get poked because the enemy will just poke them as they run back for the tracer. You will waste time chasing the tracer as well. And they will lose their shell, they'll lose probably some amount of HP. They'll, it's more likely some of them get gets picked or die to the dis like a five ball or something. So generally when you are playing Lucio, you don't want to like rotate to and fro. You just wanna, you know, from go from point A to point B in the shortest time possible. The longer you take to not brawl with the enemy, the more chances someone gets picked or you lose shell or something. So I mean they should peel for Shaz, but it's kind of like a lose-lose scenario. The moment Shaz didn't want to, didn't rotate with the team, it was a lose-lose scenario for, 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 for Gladiators. And, yeah. and, and Shaz is going to die to the one-on-one, because obviously this is an Overwatch League level Dante, uh, the Tracer, right? So unless Shaz gets to sleep, uh, essentially uh, Dante is not going to Dante is not going to lose this one-on-one. Uh, it, it's matchup dependent, but it's unlikely. Like 80% of the time the, in the one-on-one, -on -one, the, the Tracer wins the Anna. Maybe not in, in your rank game or not when you're, you guys are smurfing, and not maybe not in the Diamond rank game or some shit, or Master rank game, but Overwatch League, the, the DPS, gen, the flanking DPS generally win the support outside of like, you know, exceptions. And of course, when the exception to occur, you know, the fanfare, you know, fucking Jonak sleeps the fucking Genji two times in a row, that sort of shit. And, and it is praised as an outplay, but like I said, more often than not, the, the Anna dies to the Tracer. I, I, Goose actually comes back to peel, but yeah, it's, it's, it's too late essentially. 
Yeah, that's also why it's important for TTK, right? Between an Anna and a Tracer, it's also important, this sort of important, at least in, not just in Overwatch League, but in high ranks, how fast the trade, your aim and everything, like your aim, your bling, your bling melees, and essentially like mechanics. Because if you take a long time to kill Anna, then, you know, the enemy support has more time to peel, uh, peel the Anna. So the, the better you are as a player, mechanically speaking, right? And this is true for most games. Your time to kill, your TTK is lower. And hence, like, even if Big Goose wants to peel, right, he might be too late, right? If Dante can kill uh, Shaz in like two seconds versus maybe I'm the Tracer and I'm a Diamond Tracer and I try to kill Shaz and let's say I don't get slipped by Shaz, right? Let's say I have a chance of killing Shaz. It'll still take me like fucking like 10 to like 10 seconds because my aim sucks. But for Dante, maybe it takes him two seconds. So Big Goose would essentially have the time to come and peel me, the Diamond Tracer, away from Shaz because it takes me so long to kill Shaz. But he wouldn't have time to peel uh, for, 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 for essentially uh, uh, for Shaz against Dante. So the better, of course, the better you are mechanically, the less time the enemy has to uh, essentially capitalize on that on that on that moment to peel or to attack or to do whatever, right? So the better you are, less less time window to do anything. Okay, so Overwatch League level Dante Pock crowds goes wild. Efficiency to get better TTK. Yeah, and mechanics of course is is is, is character uh, dependent, right? So mechanics for traces like bling melee, uh, you know, bling melee uh, tracking. Uh, yeah, all, all your all your basic mechanics. Okay. Overwatch, Overwatch uses the metric system. Team will come back stronger as real team too. Yeah, thanks for the follow, Ellie. L, no, not Ellie. L. Underscore, underscore. All right, so, so where were we? We were talking about gladiators' mistakes, right? And I've said that gladiators is a powerful team, well coached team, uh, and and essentially they're too rigid, uh, or at least from time to time they are a little bit rigid, uh, and they win most of the teams, but sometimes they get upset in maps and against something because of this rigidity. And it, it's hard to fix rigidity because rigidity is not always a bad thing. If you have a very disciplined team that follows set play or follows like, you know, fundamental plays that repeats again and again, it can be good. But it also can, uh, depending on how you present those ideas and, you know, uh, to the team, it can also be bad if the team is not flexible enough to understand when you need to move away from the set plays or the concepts uh, or the rotations that you were taught. So, yeah, so Gladiator's gonna lose this fight because it's, to me, they, they split too much, right? And uh essentially is going to die because of that, that, that rotation or what that set play or whatever it was. So you're going to lose this fight. And then we're going to go to the next fight. So what I want to see from the Gladiators, and Shaz is going to change to Baptist here, and what I want to see from the Gladiators is actually like not split so much. I, d I just want the Tracers to split. I think Gladiators, m m like if they really, really want to speed, I split, I think 5-1 is the best. Right? Shaz follows the team, right? Bird Ring plays alone if he wants to split, and that's it. No one else split. Like, the enemy has a Tracer, you have no room to split. And I want to see Gladiators do that, and I think if gladiators do that, right, either you will win the fight or you will at least force outlaws to use many, many ultimates to, to, to deal with it. And of course, I mean, the next fight, if you look at gladiators versus outlaws, right, who do you think that, who do you guys think will win? Of course, the outlaws. The outlaws is like one, two, three outs and they're coming to the trance. And gladiators have zero outs. Maybe they're close to the, the blizzard, but that's it. But at the minimum, I would like to see uh, uh, gladiators playing together. So we have five people here. We have Trace over here. Okay, please, for the love of God, I don't want to. I don't want to see the Winston like playing fucking like flanking over here and just dying to the Tracer. So, okay, everything looks good, right? There are five players. Uh, there are five players. So what do we want to see? A successful push right now might not win Gladiators this fight, but they should be able to force Outlaws to use many outs, like more than one, right? If if Outlaws win this fight with only one ultimate like Pulse Bomb or or, or fucking Pep out, then it's not a win for gladiators. If gladiators want to win this map, they already fucked up like twice, right? They fucked up the first time and they fucked up the second time. For gladiators to win this map, they need to play so well and so aggressively that outlaws is forced to use many ultimates, right? But outlaws would, essentially a win for gladiators here would, I mean, of course win this fight, but uh, a bigger win would be winning this fight and making outlaws use three outs, like all the ultimates. And if they can't do that, minimally, even if you lose this fight, at least make Outlaws use more Outlaws, right? So you, you got to make like a good push, which is, to me, a 5-1 push. And they are doing that, they are doing that. So, you know, this, this, this looks good. Like, to me, this looks good. So here, here's a jump. Here's the... In fact, I would say that uh, I think Outlaws fucked it up. I think Outlaws should have played over here. Generally speaking, Overwatch League, uh, this is considered the pivot point. So if you play over here, Right, if you play, if the enemy has rush, and you can see this in Philadelphia Fusion versus, uh, I think, uh, Soul Dynasty versus Charge, uh, uh, 
Spark versus Fuck, I can't remember. Philadelphia Fusion versus Mayhem, uh, where Philly was the rush. You will see that most teams actually on defense, most team actually decides to uh, play over here. And the reason for that is obvious because this area has long line of sight both two angles, right? You can see uh, this area has long line of sight down this area and down this area. So most people actually place here. But Outlaws is not going to play there, which is, I think, a strategical mistake. So to me, right, both Outlaws and Gladiators, neither of these teams are playing well, right? Gladiators is not playing very well. Outlaws is not playing very well. The only reason Outlaws is like winning the first two fights is because Gladiators shot themselves in the feet. They did this like, I guess this set play that was impressive, but this doesn't work against Outlaws composition. And in my eye, Outlaws isn't playing well either because they're not playing the, 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 the position that I think is best in this map, right? They're playing like this position, which is gonna give uh which is gonna give opportunity to gladiators because not only is the Winston able to jump and, 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 and play at an angle that is relatively safe and powerful, uh Kefster, uh what is it called? Caster May is also more likely to get like a good wall, right? More likely to get a good wall because if you're playing in this angle right here, right? If you're playing in this angle right here, which is what Outlaws is doing, you actually get to wall anywhere here. So these, these are not good angles that Outlaws is playing. They, they really should be playing like battle angles like here to really optimize and, and you know, like essentially abuse the fact that they have like long range, uh, long range superiority essentially right so and also if they play like places like over here right they can even have put their tracer to to to, to essentially petrol so if like you have like maybe five people here you have like maybe your tracer playing over here right and then maybe if the enemy tries to try to rush you you, you your tracer just hits their back line and you have an easy pincer while still maintaining like great line of sight and and, 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 and distancing from the enemy so this is not good position for an outlaw so even though we don't know what how the fight is going to go you know we, i think we can guess right we can guess that Outlaws probably have to use more than one out. Probably have to use more than one out, right? The Orisa is already separated from the team. Uh, the, the Bab Zen can't see shit, right? <laughs> because of how uh, Outlaws is, uh, Gladiator is pushing hard, Bab Zen can't see shit. So you know, their, 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 their advantage of playing line of sight, they no longer have that. So it's likely that Outlaws will probably have to use more than one out. So let's take a look at whether uh, that's going to happen, right? So nice war. Uh, here's the hot from the from from from. They're gonna go for rockers. Rockers is gonna drop to very low. Uh, they're gonna kill the they're gonna kill the drone. But OG does get a kill. So they did use more than one out. They use a bob. Linkser use bob and a repel use a uh, repel use. What's it called? Repel use uh, window. And I believe they use pulse bomb as well. So Alos already used three outs, which is yeah. And of course, gladiators is gonna wait. Did gladiators win this? No no no. They lost this. There's no way gladiators win this. Oh, they okay. They actually use one more out. So, how many outs have outlaws used? You know, let's use a pen so we can keep track. So they use this out. They use pulse bomb. They use trance. They just use trance and they use uh, a window. How many outs did gladiators use? They use one. All right. So you know, even if gladiators lose this, okay. If gladiators lose this, they lose. All right, because they lost too many fights already. But this is already going on the right track. Like right? the the fact that gladiators, you know, use one use an ultimate for four hours is actually really really good for gladiators. So now outlaws only have two ultimates left. They have uh, sigma out and they have uh, bongo. So they literally have only two outs left. And gladiators have many uh, really really a lot of ultimates. So essentially, if one out cancels one out, right? Simple mathematics. Gladiators use one. While outlaws use another one. Gladiators you generally have a lot. So. Probably what's going to happen here, if Gladiators plays perfectly, right, and no one dies and there's no crazy play, right, Gladiators has a chance of winning this fight, right, if they, if they, if no one dies over here, right, the, the, the problem, the, 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 the danger is that Raukers just use his trance, so this trance only just came into effect, right, and Outlaws might use this opportunity to focus down uh, Gladiators, because at this point in time, Gladiators doesn't really have any ultimates, so OG does have Primal, but if you guys, if you guys like uh, are like relatively high rank players, or you guys understand like you know, if you guys are, if you guys have played Winston before, you will know that a Winston against a Discord, uh, against a Discord, you can see OG has a Discord. Is essentially the Primal can still die, right? You might have a thousand HP, and the thousand HP essentially makes you invincible in what bronze, silver, gold, even plat, diamond. But in Overwatch League, a Primal is nothing. A thousand HP feels like a hundred HP, and this is essentially what's happening to OG. So. Even though Outlaws did use four outs, uh, the Gladiators has to win this. This is the last fight for the Gladiators, right? And uh, and uh, Gladiators has to like, yeah. Even though they primal, uh, the, the transfers happen, and Gladiators have to essentially survive. So uh, here's Kefster's uh, Blizzard, and of course the trance was used to counter. The trance was used to counter OGE's primal, right? So they have no primal left. They only have 
they have no support outs, they have no primer, they only have like tanks outs and they're they're not even close to that yet. So it's gonna be a relatively easy kill on hydration. Nice lamb by the way, nice lamb on uh nice lamb by uh what's it called? By Rappel. Because actually he's gonna buy hydration a little bit of time. And I, I believe what, what what OG was trying to do was trying to protect himself from the enemy team while trying to bubble uh, trying to bubble hydration so hydration doesn't get a heal. But yeah, not not a, not a really good bubble, but I, I, I know what he was trying to do. So yeah, so at this point in time, right, we go to the, the next, what's it called? We go to the next one. Uh, yeah, we go to the next one. Wait, before we talk about next one, let's see what you guys are, some of you guys are saying. Gladiators are some, one of the best mechanical team in the league, easily, right? Now that now that they have a uh, Kefster, right, as Tracer, they have improved even more, if, that, if that's possible. Hey, John, what happened to your YouTube channel? I have not touched it because <laughs> I haven't had the time, yeah. I've also been lazy, so no, not much. I don't use a video editor, so essentially I edit my own videos. I cut my own videos and I put them on YouTube. I thumbnail my own. Yeah, I, no, I didn't. I don't thumb. I used to thumbnail my own videos. And I I hire an edit. I hire like a thumbnail maker, but essentially I I, I do the YouTube and the, the Twitch myself, and I analyze this myself as well. So I like like action action YouTube channel where they you know they have like a guy writing the script, the guy talking about what's happening, the guy to the voiceover guy, the, the that video editor guy, the thumbnail creator, blah blah blah. I am a solo guy doing all this shit, so I'm not only analyzing the vod, I'm, and it is, essentially I, I don't have that much time, which is a problem. So I don't know. I mean, it's just an excuse because I'm sure if I manage my time a lot better, I'll be able to upload a YouTube video. But I, my worry is that as I as I head to school and college, I have less and less time to, to to do anything. And if that happens, I'll prioritize my Twitch over my YouTube. But uh, I'll I'll try. Keyword being try to upload like my vods into uh, YouTube. Okay, the Gladiators Boston Vault review in particular help help a lot. Oh, thank you. Just want to say thank you for the stream. I'm flex deeper than today. I had to short course since I'll try out main tank. Didn't really have experience. And we played Ryan Signal Rush and I had wrinkly brain and, and wrote in scripts. Awesome. That's that. I'm happy for you. Yeah, nice. Uh, how do you plan fights when it does not revolve around about ultimates like in poke composition or dive? A lot of times, poke composition or dive uh, involves uh. Wait, what do you mean? When it doesn't involve revolves around ultimate. Look, poke composition is very ultimate dependent. Right? If you look at if you look at this, right, poke composition you have a uh, you have bongo. Bongo allows you to push. You have sigma ouch, which essentially forces gladiators to use a cooldown. They have to use sound barrier or they have to use a baptist win uh, baptist drone. So they have to use a lot of cooldowns to counter that as well. So actually, poke composition is very very ultimate dependent. Right? You can't really rotate that much. It's ultimate and position dependent. Right, it's important to, to oh shit. It's important. Uh, it, it why it's ultimate dependent is because each ultimate is either uh, on a uh, reactionary like Zen out is of course you use it to react like Sigma out and stuff like that. But you can also use a lot of ultimates like Bongo and 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 and, and Baptiste out to initiate and try to break shield and, and control a corner and push a corner. So they're actually like poke composition is actually about ultimates. And then another thing that poke composition is about is actually about positions, right? How you want your Sigma to flank, when you're on a position of Zen, when you're on a position of Baptiste. In the position, you, your Zen might be able to shoot more enemies, but it might be able to like, it's harder for him to heal, or he might, put him in a, he might be put in a riskier position. Your Sigma could play with your Orisa, but your Sigma could also flank alone, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's actually a lot about ultimates and also about position, yeah. There are not many compositions that's not about ultimates. Probably Divecom, Dive composition like Tracer, Genji, or like Tracer, Sombra, I mean, it's still about ultimates, but the ultimates is mainly on the tr the Sombra, maybe, or the, or the, they're probably about the Sombra and the Primal, something like that, or the Nano. So, but in, 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 in poke composition, it's generally about like every single character. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. I joined the stream and I see this beautiful diagram. <laughs> Any thoughts on QoQ? He's a great, he's a great guy. I, I was looking at Jane. Jane is currently streaming on Facebook, right? I wish he comes back to Twitch, actually. I think, I think he, Jane, I mean, I say this a lot before, but I think Jane really, really, uh, <laughs> I think the Gladiators coaches used to make fun of me for this, but essentially, I think Jane, uh, I'm, because I'm a Jane fanboy, right? I think Jane essentially is one of those few educational uh, streamers that has a, have a lot of patience and essentially contribute back to the community while helping like you know the bronze to uh, the diamond uh, vault reviews and stuff and I, I think he, he he reviews overwatch league level games as well but he's kind of like a like a like a jack of all trades he, he does everything he does like casual arcades he does like you know competitions he does 
Overwatch League reviews. Well, mine is generally like on higher level analysis and reviews, but he does like a lot of things. So I think we need someone like that. We need someone like that. Like, yeah, I, I, I <laughs> Jane is by far the better streamer and entertainer than than, than I am because he, he's also way better at like covering like, uh, covering like uh, like he's better at teaching a bronze right. If you are a bronze player and you have the choice between getting me to coach you or, or a Jane to coach you, I would say get Jane to coach you. Like Jane is, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, thanks for the follow, Boom Man Fu. Okay. Uh, in question, oh, question, John. Uh, QoQ is good, great, by the way. I think it's a very aggressive uh, off tank, and I think aggressive off tanks are essentially almost always the, one of the best off tanks in the Overwatch League. Like, smart aggressive off tanks. Like, Void was one of the off tanks I think were one of the top in Overwatch League. Like, now he's in Shanghai Dragons, but in Gladiators, I, I thought he was always one of the best player. And he showed it's in, in his statistics, right? And people just didn't consider Void in contention for being like the top two or top three uh, off tank players because people were talking about Choi Hobin, people were talking about like people, people were talking about like Mecco. Essentially, I think uh, uh, Overwatch is biased towards uh, players that are high rank. But I think Void was, Void might have been sixth position in Gladiators in 2018, but uh, 2019. But I don't think Void was a sixth position off tank. I think it's higher. So see, that's that's the thing, right? Rank doesn't always equate to skills, but people do use it as such because people don't watch like replays and POVs and stuff. He gets a bad rep because the more informed you are, the more you want to poke holes in his work. But re realistically speaking, he talks about high-level content in a more approachable way that almost all other content creators don't. Yeah, I mean, he's approachable, I think. That's that, that's the thing. Is that you, you put it right. What do you think about the Pacific scene, John? I think the Pacific scene is dying like a slow death by attrition. Uh, the teams in Pacific contenders right now, 70% are Korean. So, and that's not... I mean, the bad thing is that it doesn't give a lot of teams the chance to climb out of open division, right? At, a, at, a, at the same time, to me, like the Korean teams in Pacific Contenders, they are not that great. Outside of Thailand, who is the number one team in Pacific Contenders right now, the other Korean teams aren't actually that good. So I like to see, you know, Pacific Contenders team, like the Southeast Asian teams rise up and try to defeat, and the Japanese team rise up and try to defeat the Korean teams. But I'm afraid that this is just not going to happen, right? As more Korean teams join the scene, uh, more Pacific teams are more demoralized and they don't want to compete against all these Korean teams. And the more demoralized they are, there are going to be less teams in the scene. So it's a kind of catch-22 situation. So while I think the Korean teams aren't actually that strong, I don't know many Southeast Asian teams that will actually still want to like grind and, and, and work towards it. So yeah, I think for Pacific scene, it's more... I guess it's more. Imp I think it's really more important for like the 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 grassroots of the scene. So just just allow specific teams essentially. But again, I really really dislike the way Blizzard has uh, done up their esports. Not Overwatch League, but like anything that's not Overwatch League. I think they have made a lot a lot of mistakes. I was discussing with my brother the other day about this, and I think Blizzard has made a ton of mistakes involving a lot of their, yeah, in a lot uh, in involving a lot of their vision about how Overwatch should go. But anyway, this is not an uh, this is not an Overwatch uh, slam session. I actually wrote up like a, a essay, like a like a train of thought thing where I want to send it to like Kaplan or something. I still have his email. Byproduct of me being an Overwatch coach. But anyway, so but I'll think about this uh, some more. Anyway, this is not supposed to be a stream where I bash Overwatch. I will try to. We can have that stream, but I want to uh, put my thoughts in orders first. Orders first before I talk about what I think Overwatch should do. Where to, because I don't want to just be the guy who says Overwatch oh, no two 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 hero bands. You know, I want it to be a little bit more in depth about my opinions about how Overwatch needs to succeed as an esports because we have, we do have a lot of like uh, esports that have succeeded in, in the last few years and esports that have been around for some time CSGO, Dota and, and even League of Legends which uh, sort of like uh, got a resurgence because I think Dota and, and CSGO has like a strong gameplay concept so they don't really need to patch a lot but oh yeah you know we'll talk about this some other time right not I don't want to talk about this now screw Overwatch jungle no I love Overwatch and I if I if I if I say screw Overwatch, I essentially wouldn't be streaming Overwatch right now, right? I, would, I just won't be streaming at all. I'll just move away from the game and its community in its entirety. But I do love Overwatch, and I want Overwatch to succeed, which is why I wrote like a fucking thousand words on, on my own thoughts about it. Because I do want you know, steps to be taken. I'm not just gonna criticize Overwatch and not give solutions. I do have solutions I think would help the game. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. Why did Washington not have success this season? Uh Complicated reasons. I don't want to say it. Maybe I'll, I'll say it at the end. I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end of the year. But I think... Let's... let's yeah. All, 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 solu all, all reasons are always complicated. And there's always like a... Stuff behind it. And always like different perspectives. Anyway. 
John got retired, Overwatch League coach turned Blizz esports manager. Your stream and Nata's stream have expanded my brain. That's awesome. Yeah. I've been really impressed by Tuba recently. I think Tuba is a great player. I think there are a couple of reasons, like a couple of, like a couple of reasons why Justice hasn't been performing very well. But I think Tuba is Tuba and Ark has been extremely hardworking. Tuba and Ark has been the most hardworking players in, in Justice. And for what is worth, like whatever reasons that I I feel strongly about in Justice, I Tuba and Ark has been the two shining stars of Justice, I think. They've been working really, really fucking hard and both have very good attitude about the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do you think do you think the Korean market is still stronger than Western? What do you mean? I mean the Korean market will always be like uh, the Korean industry will always have way more infrastructure than than yeah, than, than, than anything. They, they essentially have like a culture and they have like a, a tradition of, of being very esports heavy and esports focused, right? Uh in financially speaking, industrial, uh, industrially speaking, they always they had StarCraft in like what, nineteen eighties. They had like nineteen nineties or some shit. So, yeah, this is a very very strong scene. Yeah, overall, okay. Anyway, let's continue. So where were we? Where were we talking about gladiators? Uh, let's 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 try to revisit what we we're talking about. So we talk about gladiators needing to rush outlaws because they have a Lucio. They are rush con. And Outlaws is not a rush call. We criticize gladiators for being too rigid, sticking too much to like, you know, to set plays and stuff, right? And essentially losing them a couple of fights and essentially the game against Outlaws. And we also criticize Outlaws for not playing poke composition well. There are positions where they need to stand on defense, but they're not standing in those positions. They're kind of like playing off like their sleeves, essentially. And I really don't like that about Outlaws either in this game. So I don't think both of these teams are playing really well. Both of these teams are making mistakes, but Gladiators definitely making a little bit more mistakes than, than Outlaws. Also, Gladiators' composition, I think, is harder to play, uh, technically, in the matchup. Especially when they don't have the point. So, uh, at this point in time, right? Uh, oh, okay. I actually have this example where I wrote... Split and slow. Outlaws doing it right. So I talked, and, and, I mean, if you guys were following my stream all the way, then you would know that I criticized Gladiators for splitting up and not doing it right, right? Correct? I, I said glad, Gladiators split up and not do it right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this first. Actually, let's cover some of these slides. In a perfect world, uh, taking six angles is obviously the best, but of course, like I said, Right, it's it's and what we cover. It's 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 not always possible because you know you know the enemy can just rush one angle, and there are many many different problems that come along with it. So one of the problems is of course uh, the difference maker, right? That's some of the problem uh, between a good split and a bad split. Uh, some of the problem is like for example terrain, right? It needs to cover. Oh, okay, I I I I misworded. Shouldn't have off. Uh, it need to cover some of the flanks. Uh, cover of cover of some of the wait, okay, that's correct. Cover off some of the flanks. So even if right, let's say, uh, let's see. The, you, you hold these different angles, right? Maybe this flank has like a cover that you can use. So you can shoot the enemy team, use a cover, maybe there's like a mini health pack. But maybe if you want to try to take the left angle, there is no cover. And maybe the right angle has no cover, but this angle has cover. So how you flank, what angle you flank from can be very important. Just because there are like 20 different entrances, doesn't mean all 20 entrances allow you to flank as easily. Sometimes, uh, depending on what angle you choose, right? Depending on like terrain, high ground, puffing, everything, that's pretty important. And it's important to know exactly how you want to flank and what kind of off angle you want to take. So I talked about some of the common off angle where uh, outlaws can pincer, uh, how Linkser did that. But uh, yeah, terrain is extremely important. Also, accessibility to enemies from flank. There are some flank angles that are not easy to reach the enemy team, right? The, if you take those flank angles, essentially, uh, uh, maybe it's really far away from the enemy and you have a lot of downtime or you need to use a lot of blinks to cut the distance. So terrain is really, really important depending on where you want to flank. Another thing is, of course, enemy composition and positioning, right? If, the en if you're trying to play a Winston, you're trying to flank, but you know the enemy has a tracer and a tracer excels in one on one. Tracer is really fucking good in one on one. Then obviously, it you know, you, you probably don't want to, or you want to, you want to think a little bit about, you want to think about it before you, you split. So enemy composition and positioning is really, really important. They have to, if they have a Discord, if they have a Brigitta, if they have a Lucio, blah, 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 every single smaller change, or even a Roadhog, uh, changes exactly whether you want to flank, exactly whether you want to split, how you want to split, whether it's like a 4 one, one, five, one blah, 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 right? And the last one is enemy's ultimate. There are certain ultimates that are really, really good if the enemy is split, if your supports are split from the tanks, if XYZ is split from someone. For example, if the enemy has primal rage, there are certain positions you want to take and certain positions you want to avoid. And 
if you don't play a good enough position, the Primal Rage will get a lot of value. And there's, like I said, there's a certain ultimates that, that, that essentially uh, punish you if you split too much. For example, another one, Earth Shatter. If you only have one shield and you're like splitting 24-7, just fucking uh, splitting up, it's easy for the enemy to uh, isolate one person and shatter uh, if you don't play behind the Reinhardt shield. And I'm giving like really basic examples, but most of the time, these are the, the concepts and, and, and the properties behind what makes... Uh, you know what makes like angling good, right? What makes like a what makes like gladiators split good, and in in this case, what makes gladiators split bad? Because obviously, uh, there were many many problems. One, uh, the enemy was playing tracer, but they didn't know about it. Uh, two, um, yeah, okay, maybe not this one, but essentially they, they they didn't read this one well, and of course the enemy doesn't have an ultimate for the first fight, so the split just wasn't that good. So mainly they just failed on they failed in this. The, technically, the terrain and enemies are were decent, but they failed in this one. So the split was bad. And also, this is a general like rule of the thumb, right? The more you split up, the slower you're saying you want to play. So if you split up as like 6, 5, or whatever. Okay, so the question, first question is like, why slow? Why do you want to play slow? Because, because, right? The enemy gets to rush. If you split, you're weak to the enemy rushing you, right? You're, you're isolated, essentially. It's hard to help. It's a little bit harder to help each other. And uh, if you do that, if you split and you want to get like value of the split, because you're like fucking 6 angles, right? You're shooting the enemy, you're shooting the enemy's left butt cheek, you're shooting the enemy's right butt cheek, you're shooting the enemy's right arm, you're shooting the enemy's elbow, you're shooting the enemies like from fucking like 200 different directions. Right, you want to you want to sustain that kind of threat, you want to sustain that kind of angle, and you want to also make sure you kite the enemy, the enemy rushes an angle, so maybe there's six angles, right? There's, there's six angles, and, and what happens is let's say, let's say the enemy goes, ah, fuck you man, and they send a six versus one in, along like one angle, right? Uh, the other... Now, this guy, this one guy, has to kite back. Let's use blue color. Let's say this is blue color. Right, the, the guy wants to like run away. Run, wants to run away. Wants to run away. And as the blue guy runs away, and you know, try to buy time for the other for the other five of his teammates. He, the other five of his teammates will push forward and try to punish the six people. So even though this guy focuses on running, the other five people can you know punish the six people as the six people rush. So most of the time, right, there are exceptions, but most of the time, when you split up a lot, you're saying. I want to slow things down, right? I want to maintain this anger. I don't want to rush because if I want to rush, I would stick together. I just want to play slow. A team that plays this style, what do you guys think? There is one Overwatch League team in, in, in Overwatch that's known for playing a very split and rep style and known for playing slow, which is that team. What do you guys think? There's one team. I, I talk about this team all the time. NYXL, yes. So you guys got it. NYXL, very good at playing this style. And even when I was uh, I was researching this before as an Overwatch League coach, they were very good at playing it in 2018. They were very good at playing it in 2019. And they have still they are still doing it in 2020. And 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 essentially it's one of their biggest strengths and biggest weakness. I also I also am preparing an analytical article about NYXL. Uh, but uh, that one is more for my personal reading. But I might write an article about it in, in Reddit or at least an analysis report about it. Because I have a couple of like really good examples and uh, and, and statistics why it shows in their in their gameplay. But we will talk about that some other time. Not not today. So NYXL, yes, plays this style. They split up, they rap, they're really good at that. But they also, when they when they have a choice between fighting first and fighting second, and let's say both options are relatively close, they would almost always choose to fight second. There was one occasion where, uh, you know, Justice was playing in a scream, and that was actually a good scream early on in the year, right? Good scream, we're winning the scream, and there was one occasion where half our team wanted to play really aggressive, or I think most of our team, like four or five of our team, essentially almost everyone wanted to play really aggressive, and they made that play, and uh, Ark put himself in a position that was like a very NYXL position. And after that, we had to discuss as a team how we wanted to play, right? Because, because I was like, oh, I'm too used to playing this kind of style. So, uh, yeah, but anyway, this is a style that NYXL do. They like to maintain superior position and they maintain it until, like, uh, until, you know, like the enemy gets low on HP, brick shield, and finally at a certain point in time, they wrap, they're like a cobra, right? They, they wrap you up, they surround you with like 20 different angles, slowly constrict you, and at a, at a point, they slam down, right? They, they just go for you. They're very opportun. I wouldn't even say they're opportunist. They're, I guess they're opportunistic, but more of like they're careful and conscious about when, uh, you know, when their angles have created an opportunity to push. So yeah, so they're not a very explosive team, right? If there's a word that doesn't describe NYX, it's probably explosive. Uh, probably careful, premediated is like better words to explain or like NYX. So. Even in 2018, when you know when Jonah was playing Zen and uh, you know people uh, term Jonah as the MVP of 2018, right? Sinatra was the MVP of 2019. Uh, NYXL generally plays really safe and play really rappy, and the only person that I guess played really aggressively was like Jonah. So Jonah was it, it, it fit the uh, it fit NYXL style, the Mercy Zen style. Uh, it back in uh, in 2018 because you have Jonah playing really aggressively, and if you try to push Jonah, right, it essentially it goes back to what I talked about here. 
If you try to push Jonah, let's say this is Jonah, and you try to push Jonah, and Jonah starts to kite, gets protected, the rest of NYC will wrap you up and kill you. So it's like, it's, it's like you, you, you die, and that's why most people thought NYC will win 2018. Because it's like, if you kill Jonah, right, if you try to kill Jonah, right, and Jonah starts to run away, you, you, you die to the other five people aiming you. But if you don't try to kill Jonah, and try to kill the other five, Jonah kills you because of his superior mechanics. Like his Zen is better than your Zen. So, you know, like it's like a lose lose against NYC. And that's why most people just at that in that year, right, in 2019 and 2020, I guess most people don't want to fight like Shanghai Dragons and maybe like San Francisco Shock, right? It's always San Francisco Shock that like, people doesn't want to fight. But I would say that um I would, in fact I would say that against like between Philadelphia Fusion, Shock and Shanghai, I think I still think most teams would prefer not to fight Shock. And would prefer to fight like Shanghai or or, or, or Philly. I still think most teams, I know power ranking wise, a lot of people are putting, saying like, you know, arguing that Shanghai is better than Shock, blah, blah, blah. I'm probably one of the few people that think Shock is scarier than Shanghai. Uh, or maybe like most people don't really think about much of it and just put everyone at the same, at the same category. But I've seen Shanghai play and they're very explosive, very powerful. But I think Shock has the eat factor. They, when I see them play, they play like a coach. They play like as though they can stop time, think about what's the, the best optimal play and play it. Sometimes they play slow, sometimes they play fast. And I think Shanghai always play fast. Uh, not that it's a bad thing, it's just very... Ex- uh, Shanghai reminds me of Titans, Vancouver Titans of 2019. I feel like I need to say that because now we have two Vancouver Titans, the the good one and the the Western one. <laughs> Shit. Okay, that's actually derogatory. Okay, the good one and the new one. How about that? The good one and the new one. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Shanghai Dragons currently reminds me of Titans then. So they are, they are like explosive, uh, very aggressive, and, and, and essentially that's their play style. But I still think that in a perfect world, I think Shock play style is closest to what I think uh, is like if I get to, if I'm a coach and I get to like slow down the game and I get to like play chess and say, you play like that, you play like that, I want you to play like that every single fight and say exactly how I want the next fight to go. Shock follows that, you know, that optimality and, you know, follows exactly what I think should happen next, the closest. Other teams might go, nah, my play style is fast. I don't care if slow seems what my coach thinks is correct. We will always play first, we will always play aggressive, we will always play to crush you. No, Shock, this, like, play slow, play fast, they, they're just a very scary team draw. And I suspect that most teams would, if they have to choose, they would not choose Shock. Even if, like, Shock currently is lower in the standings than, like, Shanghai Dragons or Philadelphia Fusion. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so that's NYXL start, right? Ready, ready, ready. You, you, you rush for Jonak and you lose. And then you don't rush for Jonak, you lose because Jonak shoots you. So, yeah. <clears throat> Spark. Two kind of spark is different. Sometimes they play fast and sometimes they play slow. It really depends on the meta. Uh, I like their style the best, to be honest. Yeah, some people really like their style. You know, you know when table tennis, right? You can see the the Korean table tennis player. They cut. You know what I mean? Like they, I don't. Do you guys play table tennis? So there are two ways of ho- holding a bat, right? Wait, let me see where I can. Uh, okay, let me see where I can find it. Uh, ah, fuck it. it. Doesn't matter. If you guys play table tennis, you guys will know what I mean. So there are two ways of holding a table tennis bat. You could hold it in what they call it the pen, the pen grip essentially, which is like, fuck, I can't see. Like, essentially, you hold it like a pen, like like this, like this. And the other way is the the hand the handshake, which is like you hold it like 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 a gun, I guess. And generally, like the Korean table tennis players, a lot of them, I don't know whether it's still true, but a couple of years ago it was explained to me in this way. The Korean table tennis players like to play like a very slow defensive style where they cut they cut the table tennis ball back. So they don't play aggressively with smash. They cut and they always defend. They always react, react, react. And one day you make a mistake, bam! Reminds me of NYXL style. And then there are certain countries of table tennis players where they feel like the best way of playing table tennis is always smash and play fucking aggressively. Place, place the ball left, right, and suddenly smash, smash. So yeah, I, I thought I thought it was like a very, very NYXL like kind of thing. I, I used to like watching Korean, the top Korean table tennis player play because they always play this very beautiful, elegant style of like defensive play. But the Korean table tennis players are, I believe, not the top table tennis players in the world. I think the Chinese are the top, and, and the China, the China, the China Chinese are the top table tennis player in the world. But it doesn't matter. This this ain't Olympics. And also, I, I I might be like inaccurate with some of the things. So this was like when I was very young, and this was how it was explained to me essentially. So, uh, slow pace I wasn't great doing the rhyme May meta. Yeah, both better than few. <laughs> I never bet against Shock. Yeah. There's a reason why you know some of the teams have been upsetted before, right? For example, uh, Mayhem upset uh, against Philly, right? Uh, you know, Houston upset against Gladiators. But there's one team, uh, even NYX has lost uh, and, and got upset before, right? Teams that you think, oh, NYX is going to win, and then they essentially lose. So some teams always have like certain play styles or certain weaknesses or like tendency to lose towards a certain meta or something. 
But there is one team that rarely gets upset, right? San Francisco Shock. They get upset like once this year against Gladiators, and I have a strong feeling that they're not going to lose gla against Gladiators ever again, right? The, the second time they fought against Gladiators, it was like a 3-0, and I, I, I strongly suspect that Shock is not going to lose to anyone again. Maybe they, you get 3 twos. Maybe you get like 3 twos. But I, if there is a team that you almost, almost always want to bet to win, and, and has like the least amount of upset, I think it's Shock. Because even Shanghai Dragons, like, you know, got like, I know they, they went 2-3, they went like 3-2 against Chengdu, but, you know, yeah, I don't know. I think Shock is by far this is just the scariest team. And I guess, I know, I understand this is an opinion, but as a coach of like two years in the Overwatch League team, they are still, after looking at so many screams, dozens of screams against Shock, and you know, we fought uh, many other teams too, they're still the scariest team to me. I don't care what the records show, I don't care if they're second or third in the standing, right? Unless they're absolutely Papega and they dropped like 10 or something, they, I think they'll always be the scariest team to me. Okay. Basically, NY says literally, literally just a bunch, bunch of table tennis player. So, how impactful is mental coaching? Do you want to rap or not? What do you mean? Uh, mental coaching? I don't know enough of it. I think it's important. But the teams have joined... I guess in esports, it's still a new, a new enough industry that, you know, even... Like, there are many aspects of esports that are not, like, completely optimized. I think there should be sports psychologies, a dietitian and everything, but just a lot of factors are missing. But I think down the road esports will be like the infrastructure will get a lot stronger and that's when you start seeing like uh like you start seeing like the the, the backup crew right the, the the people not just the coaching staff get like expands to help the player a lot more i think shock is a testament to how powerful coaching is mm. yes i gotta go but you're still streaming like and i want to see that see you just like <clears throat> i mean their lineup is also disgusting hot take but the lineup wouldn't be as good without crusty I think Krusty has taught the team, I mean, maybe this is a hot take as well, but I think even if Krusty left the team right now, I don't think Shock is going to be bad. As long as they have a decent coach, I think Krusty has already built a strong fundamental. And Because I think what Krusty teaches, he has mentioned this in interviews, right? Krusty teaches players how to think, essentially. He has said this before. So, uh, and yeah, he says he, he makes his players smarter. Uh, and, and you can see this in a lot of Shock's play, where they, you can see they don't really have a set play. Sometimes they have a set play, but... A lot of times you can see they, ch they, they, they are playing a set play and then they change out of the set play, they rotate out of the set play. So I think, at least I, I, I think, right, that, that they have already internalized a lot of Krusty's teaching. I mean, of course, as long as Krusty is here, they will always improve and stuff, but I think even if Krusty leaves now, I think they will never be a team, as long as you keep the current roster, and maybe you keep like Jungbuck, because Jungbuck already know how Krusty works. Because uh, I don't want to take things away from like Jungbuck and Nike. I mean, I know Nike is uh, coaching... Uh, Coaching, uh, what's he called? Coaching Paris is the but I don't want to take anything away from him. And I think even if, uh, you know, Krusty leave, I think fundamentally Shock will always be scary. But yes, I, I I don't know exactly how much Krusty have done for the team, but I think it's quite significant. But I, I, I don't want to take away from assistant coaches. I think assistant coaches, a lot of times they do even more work than the head coaches. Many, many occasions. On many occasions. So Krusty might, you know, build a fundamental and, and build a structure. And after that, you know, the team starts cruising because the assistant coach already know what to teach, what to coach, and what to prioritize. That's why. Okay, thanks for the follow, Paradox OW. M mechanical skill of Shock is like a lot better than bottom Overwatch League. Mm, eh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think the difference between like, because Justice is now 20th position, right? I'm trying to think the difference between like the mechanics. Uh... Yeah, I guess. Mechan mechanically speaking, Shock is pretty strong. I think they have the if they play Reinhardt, I think <laughs> Super's Ryan is better than Ross. Uh, Violet. Hmm, Violet aim got. It, Violet is more consistent, I would say. Morph is. Yeah, I think Ax Brigitta is better than Morph, though. <laughs> I think Ax Brigitta is better than Morph. But yeah, Lucio. Must uh, Ax Mercy is also really quite good. But yeah, Lucio is maybe Mo Moth is probably better. Uh, but but yeah, it's really hard to compare like that. A lot of times, you are like five percent worse in something and five percent better in something. But yeah, I think there's an argument where you can say that shock mechanics is a lot better than a lot of other teams. Or I wouldn't say a lot better, but better. How much better is I think subjective. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, in Overwatch League mechanics don't differ much. It's when you talk about sheer aim, sleep darts. 
a lot of times you will see statistic wise or you even see like sheer mechanics when you watch people scream they're quite similar a lot of times overwatch is won or lost by the decision making between teams rather than mechanics i think that wasn't as true in the first year of overwatch league because in overwatch league first year you have teams like London Spitfire with GC Busan and like fucking Kondong Bandera right together as a, in a team. But you also have teams like Shanghai Dragons that went 0 and 40. But I think the current teams in the Overwatch League no longer are like 0 and 40 caliber. I, I know there are some teams that are still like losing a lot. Like I know, I understand Justice. And you know, people say Boston isn't really good and Houston and, and Valiant, which is not true, of course. But yeah, I think in the last two years, I think the gap has massively closed. And yeah, and I, 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 I don't think it's anywhere close to where what it was like in 2018. Okay, so let's continue. So we talked about how gladiators split up a lot and they did it wrong. So we if we talked about that, right, we gotta see how teams do it right as well, right? Because if you only look at mistakes and I tell you guys it's a mistake, it's a mistake, you're like you guys are like, okay, okay, I get it, John, I get it, John. These are all mistakes, right? Show me the correct play. Oh Jesus, the clap was so loud. It must have I must have clapped in like a specific angle. Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. So it was like, it just, it just resonated, dude. When I clapped and I was like, I deafened myself. It was like a specific angle. My two palms meet. Okay, anyway. What was I saying? Uh, oh yeah. We know how Gladi- We saw how many times Gladiators did it wrong. So we gotta see something right, right? Otherwise you guys are saying like, you know, John, like, man, you just show us mistakes. You got, you know, to, 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 to understand how something works, right? You know, I have to ask you guys questions, which I'm trying to do, right? I'm asking you guys questions. And, and you know, so you guys actually think, but uh, you guys are giving me a lot of correct answers. Awesome. So you guys are already great students. A plus students, acing the class, first class honors. Uh, yeah, so of course, but I also, have to, I also have to show you guys what's the correct things, right? I can't just show you guys mistake. So we, we, were, we are lucky enough that, you know, Outlaws actually did it right. Remember, we talked about how when you split up, the slower you're saying you want to play. And let's look at let's look at this example, right? That's that's I have this screenshot here, but we can see it real life here. So uh we know that Outlaws lost two players. You guys remember how Linkser died? So Linkser, let's let's go back to the start, right? Let's go and start look at the the first two people that died in uh, Outlaws. Let's go back to the start because I know I keep talking about other stuff, so we've got to remind ourselves what happened in the fight, right? We have just, just got to bring back to the class. So, you know, at this point in time, 6v6, Linkser is low, Rockers is using his trance. We talked about how OG might die because, you know, OG is getting killed by shares, but uh, uh, he's very low and he's discarded. So, Linkser is going to, you know, very close to dying, gets the trance, and great freeze. Kefster is going to throw down the freeze, right? Kefster is going to throw down, throw down the blizzard because uh, Rockers used his trance. Why did Rockers use his trance? Rockers used his trance because uh, OG used his primal. So, we talked about how gladiators have played well because this was the first fight. Right, the first fight in Busan, the first fight in fucking Busan, the gladiators didn't split up stupidly, right? They split up 5-1. They have Bird Ring flanking alone, the five people rushing, and this is essentially how gladiators should have played from the start, but they only played it correctly in the third fight. And then now we see results, because, because gladiators played it right in this fight, we see results, finally. The results comes in terms of Outlaws needing to use so many ultimates and still making this like a relatively even game. Why is this the case? Because gladiators have finally played how they should be playing their composition match up in the first place and they're finally uh, they're finally gonna succeed so they kill links up with the with the with the blizzard and they're gonna focus on hydration as well and they're gonna kill two people right and of course unfortunately at, at this point in time you look at all these guys okay let's let's slow it down we have five people then we have six we have baptiste as well and he almost kills uh, almost dies to dante actually so we have six people versus four people so this at this point in time it's a 6v4 right so does outlaws want to group together does outlaws want to play close together no this is when they split up right remember outlaws is a slow composition they are poke composition and what did we talk about just now we said that if you want to take six angles and everything right you want to play slow the more you split up the slower you want to play the more you group up like you can see gladiators grouping up as five people and baptiste is, might die to tracer gladiators want to be, be fast right so gladiators is almost always the aggressor in this case if they slow down their aggression if they make you know, a move that if they play slower than Outlaws, at a certain point in time, uh, you know, the longer you play slow, or, you know, the, the slower you are, the more likely Outlaws will, will be able to get kills of Zen, of Sigma, of their Tracer. So the, uh, Gladiators need to play really, really fast. They need to kill someone. So probably the best person to kill right now, first of all, they need to allow their Baptiste to survive. 
right? They want to make sure this is a 6v4, not a 5v fucking 4. So they need the Baptist to survive to heal everyone. Remember that they are going to get a lot of poke damage as well, so they need the Baptist. So first of all, we are going to see, I, I mean, I, I know what happens already, but we're going to see whether Baptist uh, survives here, because you can see Dante is actually going to try to kill the Baptist. So probably, uh, if possible, you know, we, we want Baptist to survive. Uh, let's, let's take a look whether Shaz has any cooldown. So he doesn't even have cooldown. He has 21 seconds to lamp, but he has 2 seconds he can heal himself. So let's see whether Dante actually kills him. Uh, but aside from this, we're going to take a look at this in like a couple of seconds. We also want to take a look at where gladiators aim for. Probably what gladiators want to do is aim for one of these guys, right? Either the Zen or the Baptiste, one of these guys. And they want to rush these guys, right? Because remember, we, we say they're the aggressor. If they only stay on point, what's going to happen? They're, they're probably going to die to poke. So they do need to rush someone. And between these two targets, probably uh, between all these four targets, the easiest target is probably the Zen and the Baptiste. Uh, probably it's more likely that they go for the Baptist because Baptist is closer, right? The Zen, you know, there's a chance that the Zen just moves away and moves this way. And that the, the Winston doesn't have jump and the Winston doesn't have bubble, so... Probably what they'll do is they'll go for the Baptist. I didn't say whether it was right or wrong, I just said that they're probably going to go for the Baptist. So, without further ado, let's take a look at Dante and see whether he actually manages to kill the, 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 the shares, right? I'm going to slow it down. So he hit, missed pretty much all his shot, but it's a hard thing to do. So he actually missed his entire clip, which is unfortunate. He's going to recall and probably he's not going to be able to kill Shaz. So it's kind of unfortunate, it was like kind of mechanical, right? But, uh, and Bigu is going to come back and, and try to help him. And of course, Link's, uh, Dante is not going to, Dante is not going to commit because the Big Goose is already uh, uh, zoning. And this is a good peel from Big Goose. So uh, technically, Dante should have killed Shaz. And if Dante killed Shaz, I, I think what's going to happen is that uh, Outlaws might actually win the, this map. But we'll, we'll see what happens, right? But there's a bigger chance that Outlaws bring it back. Because 4 versus 5 is essentially very winnable. Very winnable without the Baptist. But, um, Actually, I want to kind of take a look at Dante's aim again. I, I, I'm just curious why Dante missed so many shots. Was this just accident? Yeah, I think he just kind of fucked up because he, he couldn't hold an angle because he didn't know where Shaz was, right? He kind of messed up all his shots, essentially. Because he should have killed Shaz. Shaz was 64 HP. How many bullets did he land on Shaz? Let's take a look. I mean, of course, even Overwatch League players are, are, will miss a couple of shots. Just want to just wanna take a look at how many shots he missed, essentially. Oh my god, he actually dropped to 8 HP. Jesus Christ. So he was at 60, what, 64? 62? Wow, he, he got shot, what, four times? Three times? Jesus Christ. Very close. If Shaz dies here, I think Gladiators loses. I mean, Gladiators, okay, I'll give you guys a spoiler. Right? Gladiators lose this round anyway. But because of a mistake that they make. Not because of Shaz uh, dying. So we'll see that in a, in a bit. So Big Goose, good peel. Protects uh, Shaz. All right, of course, Tracer has no recall as well. So he's not going to try to commit. At this point in time, of course, what do we talk about, right? Goose and Shaz. Goose picked up Shaz, so OG has no heals. And OG is, yeah, it's, it's in danger of dying. Because remember, the enemy is poking, right? So the Sigma and the Zen, they're all trying to poke the OG. They know OG is hiding over here. They know Baptist can't heal him. So they can poke OG and they can kill OG. So at this point in time, what's happening? Uh, they're rushing. One, two, three, four, five. Five people rushing one player, right? And they're, they're going to try to kill Baptist, right? And we can see whether they succeed here. They're going to be close. And Orange Cloudy is going to survive skin of his teeth. And Chess is going to try to stabilize uh, Orange Cloudy. So... What currently is the numerical advantage right now? So they did lead, they did lose OGE right, but I mean they did kill Baptist, so it's I mean I know it looks like Ash is here, but Ash is actually still running back. So currently right at this moment it's like a five v three, five v three. So they do still have like two man advantage, uh, but it's gonna be hard uh, to push these essentially because uh, Goose is using heals to heal everyone, heal himself essentially uh, also, and he's going to try to heal LH Cloudy as well, so he didn't use his speed. So even though, right, even though Gladiators do want to rush, look at how far away Raucus is, right? Imagine you're the Rhino, look at how far Raucus and Mako is, even if you push out and you start pushing, probably by the time you reach, the, the Ash is already in position to punish you and they, you know, they, they always keep on kiting. So the only way that Gladiators can catch up is if Big Goose like uses his, his, his speed, but like I said, he, he uses it to heal himself, so it's like, kind of unfortunate. So, what does Gladiators want to do next? Remember what we say, uh, Gladiators is always the aggressor, right? They, they can't play slow. If they play slow, they're going to lose. The Ash is fucking coming back. Look at that. The Ash is coming back. The Orisa is, you know, he's not coming back. He's a step of the, the choke, but essentially he's no longer in spawn. And you know, it's, it's a matter of time. If Gladiators don't kill anyone, right? If they just, they already have the point, but if Gladiators don't rush anyone, we'll just see a repeat of what happened. We'll just see a repeat of what happened. And this time, they don't have Primal. They don't have Primal, they don't have Blizzard. So they, they lost two of one of the, the two of the most important outs, right? Primal gets to kill Zen or Force Trance, and they don't have that, or a Force Lamp, and they don't have that. And they don't have Blizzard either, right? And, and though, that was also a very powerful ultimate. It's essentially, Kefster's Blizzard killed two people. It killed Linkser, it also killed Hydration. But they don't have either of these ultimates. They only have Sound Barrier and Baptist out. So 
let's think about it. Can LH Cloudy's uh, Shatter do anything? No, it's it, they're, they're all too far. Shatter is essentially, you know, if the enemy plays well and perfectly, you know, it's hard to land a shadow. Does Big Goose want to use Sound Barrier and rush Outlaws? Maybe, until you, so, until you see the Outlaws have Sigma out. So what's going to happen is, if Big Goose uses his Sound Barrier and rush Outlaws, and Mako uses his Sigma out, essentially the Sound Barrier is useless, right? And then of course, they, they can just wait until the last second use his, his Sigma out, and essentially the Sigma out will do all the damage in the world, all the 50% damage on all, all six characters, all five characters, uh, and, and the, the Sound Barrier will be useless. So what Big Goose wants to do is, he needs to survive, save his Sound Barrier to react to, the ultimates that Outlaws is going to use. Probably the, 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 the Sigma out. So that leaves only one final ultimate, or that leaves only two ultimates to make a play. Baptiste out, and Pulse Bomb. And I think these are the two most important out. Birdring needs to uh, get his Pulse Bomb and go for the Zen, right? You can also see Birdring, a position is not the best, right? If Birdring was over here, that would be a great position because he can actually play for one clip. And even if he missed the one clip, he will have his, uh, his essentially he will have his, 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 his Pulse Bomb. And of course, Birdring is an Overwatch League level, uh, level uh, Tracer. So it's not going to be hard to land the Pulse Bomb. It's like a 70, 80% chance, right? You, you won't be able to land the Pulse Bomb like 100% of the time, but there are only three players. So essentially, you know, Outlaws have even less pressure on the flanking Tracer. So, you know, he will probably shoot Rockers, try to one clip him. And if he fails, probably try to Pulse Bomb Rockers. And even if they don't get the Pulse Bomb, uh, probably to save the Zen, uh, these guys have to peel, right? Dante probably has to turn back and help the Zen. Sigma maybe turns back and try to, you know, kinetic grass to eat the Pulse Bomb or just chill and protect Rockers, which does gives all these guys the opportunity to push because the Zen won't be able to spam anymore. Uh, they all have to protect the Zen. But uh, Bird Ring, of course, isn't holding the angle. Bird Ring, instead of playing over here, which I said would actually allow Gladiators to win very easily, Bird Ring is holding over here, which is a problem because it's going to be hard to flank Zen, right? You can't, you can't exactly go all the way here. It takes too long a time. And, and this is not fucking a diamond. You can't just like double blink behind the Zen. Essentially, if you double blink towards the Zen, the Zen hits you once, you have to recall. And then you're stuck in the same place. But now you have less blinks and less recall. So essentially, the, the best flank that Bird Ring can do is stay here. Right? Bird Ring can stay here. At, at most, uh, Burring can maybe can push if the enemy uh, if his team starts pushing, but uh, Burring position currently is not the best. But it's not his fault. It's just that you know the Burring is over here because he actually he tried to help the team with the Baptiste. So he's in a in, in, in a position, and of course he killed Hydration and Linkser. So he's in a position where you know even though they killed all these people, it's hard for them. It's hard for Gladiators to actually follow up and continue killing people. They kind of in a bad spot right now. They're kind of stuck right. They're like I I want to rush, but it's kind of hard to rush. They they don't really want to use any ultimates and stuff. So, uh, <clears throat> let's just drink a cup of coffee. Screams, has been, screams can be a really misleading thing. Watch Trace is too good at assassinating Peps. And, okay, why is Ash Tracer such a strong composition played so much? So often versus Ash Echo. Tracer's really strong against Peps. And someone, yeah, someone answered already. This is also why a team started playing Baptiste Brigitta. Essentially to counter the Tracer while pocketing your own Tracer at the same time. So if one team plays Brigi uh, Baptiste Brigitta and the other team plays like, uh, yeah, Babzen, it's, it's, it's quite hard for them to survive. You 100% completely are forgetting about R Cloudy's creative Ryan plays that create opportunity for a 6-man shatter. Yeah, I mean, but Outlaws will essentially have to throw the game to get shattered here at this point. They have two shields. It is very hard for, to creatively shatter in cough maps, especially a cough map where the enemy team is playing uh, two shells and, and, and kiting. Creative shatters occur, I know you are joking, right? But creative shatters, for the rest of you guys, creative shatter occurs in good terrains where you're hiding, where you can play, where you have enough broad potential, where you can pull the enemy's attention. And this, this is one of the worst positions to be for Reinhardt because the enemy is far away, they know you have shatter, it's going to be hard for the Reinhardt to land a shatter. This is an Overwatch League team too, it's not a fucking random platinum team you shatter and they, none of them reacts in time and they forget that you have shatter. No, they're perfectly, they're generally probably perfectly check, tracking, they are actually has shatter, so they will be able to react. Trisa has bling, Zen is far, and Mako, of course, has uh, has his own shield. Okay, what do you think of Hydration main tank? I mean, he's, he's not a bad main tank. We, we, we actually did see his main tank a little bit in Gladiators. It's actually not a bad main tank. What do you think about, the, what do you think the no hero pool will be? Ash Tracer? Uh... Yeah, probably Ash Tracer, to be fair, to be honest. It's either going to be Ash Tracer or it's going to be Dive. Uh, Ash Tracer, Baptiste, Brigitte, or Dive. It's either we're gonna be Dive or Poke. Yeah, that's, it's always that. Do either yeah either Dive to break the Poke composition with Ash and Baptiste and, and break or Zen, or you are Poke. So you have like you you only have two. Yeah, 
And uh, it wouldn't always be Baptist Brigitta. There are some maps that you can play Baptist Zen. So it'll be like Poke with Baptist Zen or Baptist Brigitta or Dive. <laughs> That's essentially the two choices. You won't see any rush. Maybe unless you play Li Zhang. So. <clears throat> yeah, no, there are, there are some maps that you have to play uh, Dive. Uh, Gibraltar, for example. You can't play Poke in Gibraltar. Creative Shadow usually results in Int because I think Shadows are seen as that. And reali in reality, there are the multitude of. Yeah, majority should be, should be Dive. In reality, there are a multitude of ways to use it effectively. I mean, yeah, that's, that's how, how you want to define it, right? You define the phrases and everything. Would a dive DPS be Tracer Echo? Mm, I'm, I'm thinking of Gibraltar, so probably Echo and... Uh, Echo Ash or Echo Sombra. Probably Echo Ash, to be honest. I mean, even Echo... Tr even Tracer Ash actually works as well. <laughs> That's the thing. If you play Dive, you can play a lot of things. So, okay. Uh, okay. Where are we? We are the, we are the last fight, guys. Stay strong, right? Stay strong. We are we are, <laughs> we are making good time blasting gladiators, flaming gladiators. <laughs> Jesus, I feel bad. Gladiators is a good team, guys. Like whichever team I criticize, most of the time, like Overwatch League teams are strong. Uh, I know Contenders teams are strong as well, but it doesn't take away from all this Overwatch League team being able to beat like. 95% of the competitive team out there. Maybe the bottom team, maybe the bottom three teams have some trouble against like the top two or three contenders team. But yeah, any of these Overwatch League team can still win, right? Um, anyone that's not like the top three contenders team. So regardless of who I criticize, right? Bear in mind that these are still all very, very good teams. So yeah, of course, even among good teams, someone has to be first and someone has to be 20th. So yeah, but my criticism doesn't take it away from the fact. So I don't. I hope I. I know. Just he, because I criticize gladiators a little bit more than outlaws, you guys don't think gladiators is a weak team because no way they are a weak team, right? They are still easily one of the strongest team. And if gladiators fight outlaw again, like right this second, I'll still put my money on gladiators probably because I think all these mistakes are things that gladiators coaches would have already uh, were spotted out and, and and taught to gladiators. I don't think there are a team that can't spot these sort of mistakes. I think there are teams that doesn't spot these mistakes or spot it really slow. But I have I I have always like believed that gladiators coaching stuff as is one of the one of the good ones. So uh, Deepin knows how to pick his assistant coaches. He he's mentioned that before. He's he mentioned that in an interview where he, he said he was proud of his abilities to pick great assistant coaches. Okay. Why is Faye so mysterious? I mean with a name like Faye, of course it's mysterious. It's a nice name, Faye. I like his name a lot. I've heard of the team of me. It's he shuns the limelight. Okay, so first out. Okay, okay. I want to see where you guys remember. So, which ultimate should gladiators use first? What did I say? What did I say? Which ultimate should gladiators use first? And which ultimate should gladiators always re use re reactively? I'm gonna go P. But I want to see the correct answer. Do you guys pay attention? Okay. Trace of Bab. Okay, I don't know what, what's going on in chat, but okay. Yeah, Trace of Bab is correct. So either Bering gets his pulse bomb and, and, and tries to plan it on someone. Not easy because essentially if he wants to plan on someone, he has to blink towards an enemy, right? And of course, as you know, if you are a tracer, you always want to take an off angle and land pulse bomb or clip someone. If you are in front of the enemy tanks and you try to blink towards an enemy tank, very hard, very dangerous, very risky, probably needs to probably will be forced to use recall very quickly. But yeah, the other option is uh Shaz Baptiste uh window. So he can play it like over here, right? Because the enemy is really far away. So why what he can do is uh, an option is move to the left. 
use his uh, window right here. So I'm glad you guys paid attention, right? Use, use the window, start shooting Mako, start shooting rockers, break Mako's uh, you know, staff, stop them from being able to hold this area, force them to use cover. At the same time, gladiators can push uh, uh, outlaws. So what it will look like is uh, Shares would be playing like here, the rest of the team will start pushing. Mm -hmm. It's a five people, right? So four people will start pushing, one person will stay here, something like that. And similarly, I mentioned how Bird Ring, it's hard for Bird Ring to do anything because he has a blink towards his. Uh, it's hard for Dante to do anything either because he wants to pressure the Baptiste, right? But he, it's hard for him to blink towards the Baptiste. So technically at this point in time, funnily enough, the Zen is relatively safe and the Baptiste is relatively safe as well, which is funny because, you know, both teams are having Tracer. But the, technically the conclusion of the previous, all the fights previously and all the skirmish previously has put both Tracer in a position where both, they are between the tanks of both teams and they have to bypass the front line. And remember I talked about how important, if you want to take off anger, it's important to have like good terrain, good position, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they, neither of the team, yeah, neither of the team has like good terrain, good position. Uh, at least neither of, the team, neither of the Tracer has like good enough position or terrain. So... Yeah, 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 it's actually gonna have to blink towards the enemy tank and probably gets forced to use recall if they do that. So they probably don't wanna do it. Okay, but here, so let's take a look at whether Shaz actually did it, right? So he needs to do it in the next one or two seconds. Because if he doesn't, what Outlaws might do is uh, make a first move or poke them. And essentially, and, and of course, all the Ash can come back and they don't want all that to happen. So let's take a look. Here's the here's the gravitic flux, and I really don't like this. I don't like the fact that you know Shaz was slow in using his uh, window because he does use his window now, but to me it's too late. I wanted he, I, I think he should have used window way earlier so he can start healing his Ryan because at this point in time, right? Even if Big Goose lands his uh, his, 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 his his sound barrier, right? Uh, what's gonna happen is at this point in time, uh, when the Ryan lands and it cuts fifty percent of his HP, uh, he essentially ends with zero HP. So what what Dante is going to do? He's going to stick the fattest uh, pulse bomb of his life and he's going to die. But if Shaz is altered early, and of course this is a very tight window, if it's altered really fucking early, in fact, did Shaz have his invincibility? Oh, he doesn't even have his invincibility. It's, that's very unfortunate. So technically, Shaz might get pulse bomb. But obviously, it's easier to pulse bomb the Ryan because bigger body than as uh, than than like Shaz, especially since Shaz also has like a lot of HP, more HP than Ryan because Ryan is like hundred or something. As you can see, how much HP Ryan has. Uh, 198. And Chess has... Well, more than, more than Cloudy. Yeah. Okay, so where, where were we? What were we talking about? Uh, so I wanted him to window earlier. So that he could have healed cl uh, Cloudy. So that the puzzle might hit, but you know, there's a chance that Cloudy doesn't die. Because if you can top up Cloudy to like 500 HP, then essentially the puzzle hit, he will still have 200 left. Even after your, if, even after the Sunbearer protects you from the Sigma's damage. So I mean, I think the chance is still like relatively high that Cloudy die, but that was probably the best play that Chess could have made. But this kind of window essentially is not the best because one, it doesn't allow you to heal Cloudy very easily. Two, you, you, you can't really pressure the enemy very easily. So I don't, I don't like the window. I don't like the fact that Chess was a little bit slow in using the window, but he did use it quite fast. So it wasn't that he didn't use it. I think if he didn't use it, there would have been a truly tr uh, horrendous play, but uh, Chess did use it. So... Just the execution of it is not the best. So Goose is now going to start playing for variants because Goose has no choice. This is the last fight for the Gladiators. They need to win the fight, but they already lost their main tank. So Goose and uh, Goose and Kefster uh, have to play as aggressively as possible. Right? With the remnants of the sound barrier, they have to play as aggressively as possible. They have no choice. They have no choice. They already lost their Rhine. They already lost their Ryan, it's a, they, they kind of kite. If they try to cut, what happens if they try to avoid this fight and try to move back to point? They will die, right? Because they can't play slow. So Big Goose and, and, and Shaz, uh, Big Goose and Capstone will try their best to kill people. But yeah, it's going to be, yeah, essentially it's, yeah. And, you know, I, I, do, I do like the fact that they try because I think it's the best possible play they do it. Because at least they have three people, right? They, they, Goose, if Goose was still alive, we have three, you essentially have three people. One, two, three, versus the four people over here. And of course, you also have Baptiste. So technically, it's 4v4. You have the Baptiste over here, and you notice that the Baptiste uh, has a very hard angle, right? He could, he's trying to use the window, but if he played like that, it would have been easier to use the window. But the 4v4. 4v4, and uh, I think uh, you can see, yeah, Bird Ring is trying to time the aggression that Big Goose does. So technically, Big Goose is a tank right now. He just went in, right? Ran in hard on the enemy while you know while while Kefster tries to freeze uh, Mako and while uh, Tracer tries to get Zen. So this is essentially Gladiator's best possible play, the best possible play available. After uh, average Cloudy died and after like you know after uh, yeah after the the Sun and everything, so yeah this was a good play from Gladiators.
But uh, it is too late, right? Oh, actually, they killed two people. Wait, did they win this? Fuck, I can't remember. Okay, but yeah, it was good play from Gliders. The fact that they actually did that gave them the chance to, to, to pull it back if they... Ah, that's so unfortunate. Okay. Yeah, give them the chance to almost... Uh, and of course, since the, the Ryan is gone and the, the Ryan is gone, that Shaz is going to die next because his front line is gone. Nothing's going to kill everyone, right? So... So I can see a lot of great mechanical plays and, you know, like, ultimate usage from Gladiators, but their set plays or the way they played the first few fights in this map was uh, flawed, and this is actually not great. Anyway, this is obviously an easy loss because they already were two men down. And 100 to 40 percent from Gladiators outlaws. Gladiators could have backed out entirely and try to buy more time. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see whether whether it was an option, right? Um, I was gonna immediately answer, but you know it's good to check again, see whether there's an option. So it has to be before, after uh, the Winston died, right? So they, if they want to back out, they will have to back out here. Hmm. I think if they back out here, I think the best possible play is still pushing, I think. If they back out here, against Outlaws, because at this moment, right, it's a 5v, uh, if you look at how many, it's a 5v3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I mean, 5v3, right? Wait, is it 5v3? Yeah, it's a 5v3. If they back out and play on point, they will get more points. They will get more you know, points essentially. But, and of course, Mako, you, you, you mentioned you want to split up and everything. But, I think it's only a, a... I mean, I guess that's another option. To be honest, you know, it's not a bad option at all. But I, I, I think the better option is still rushing. Because at the end of the day, it's already at 96%. If they don't rush and they play on point, essentially you're saying they are not going to try to win the fight, right? Uh, yeah, they'll just play slow and try to rack up the points. Mako's gonna use his out. Big Goose will be forced to use his sound barrier because Linkser is coming back. So you have Links. Uh, let's say the enemy uh, Gladiator split on point. Linkser maybe takes this position, right? Uh, uh, Outlaws maybe take a more aggressive position like that. You can't pressure Linkser. Linkser shoots for free. At some point in time, you need to touch the point, but you only have Reinhardt to touch the point. And then if, let's say Mako uses out on average Cloudy. Even if you split up, you have to use sound barrier. You have no choice. You have to use sound barrier the moment Mako outs. And regardless of what happens once Linkser comes, I think it's very hard for Outlaws to survive. Because you're, you're not trying to win the game. If you try to go back to point, you're just trying to get more percentage point. You know what I mean? Like you're trying to get 8. Now they're at 8%. You're saying that, you know, I want Gladys. I think Gladys can get like 40%, 50%. I think your play is better. I think your play is better if Outlaws wasn't at 96%. Then you can get as much point as possible. Right? Like for example, let's say Gladys won the first fight and they're, they're going to lose. They're going to lose. They can get up to 50 60% and lose the fight. Maybe don't even don't even use ultimates. Force outlaws to use ultimates against them. Force them to use gravitic flux, right? Maybe use sound barrier. Force them to use more ultimates. But I think at this point in time they need to win every single fight. They have no choice. This is their best chance. If you can't even win this 5v3, you think they can win when Linkser comes back and Orisa comes back? I don't think so. I don't think so. They don't even have Blizzard. The two most powerful ultimates, Blizzard and Primal, gone. They can't win this. If they go back to point, it's not even a good position. They'll just lose the wall to attrition. I think pushing them is the best possible chance. It's not a great thing because they already are losing the fight, but because it's so, it's already like the last fight. They have to take the risk. But I think your 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 thing isn't like a bad plan. At all. If gladiators choose that to do it, like choose to do that here, I wouldn't even say it was like a bad play. But I would say that it was it's a worse play than than rushing the five v three. Okay. Wait. 
Hi John, how are you doing? Is this the start of a series? I mean, it, it is a lecture, if that's why I'm asking. Um, I'm lecturing on creating tempo, outlaws doing it right. Gladiators find a mistake. So my summary here was like, if this in composition, played the matchup poorly, played too slow and should have been fast, played when shouldn't, understood composition and the matchup against poke poorly, essentially. Do you think shock, uh, shock Philly will be exciting this week or will shock just roll Philly? We have gotten Kefster yet, roster control LG. Yes, I would. I think Kefster is a really good player. I think that was a great decision uh, uh, Gladiators made. You think the friend, the farmer? <laughs> the mushroom farmer? Shock Philly will be exciting this week or will Shock just roll Philly? I don't think Shock will roll Philly. Oh, I think it's going to be exciting though. I think it's going to be 3-1 to Shock. But it is really hard to predict. I, it's, it's, yeah, it's, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, hard to predict actually. But I think Shock is cleaner, so I'm going to give it to Shock. I don't think, I think Shock is actually weaker this year than they were last year. And I don't know why. They must, yeah, I don't know if it's coronavirus or some shit, or homestand or, or some shit, but I think they're a little bit weaker. But they still play, the core concept of Shock is still similar to how they were last year. Even when I review them, they make a little bit more mistakes, but they still play close to uh, perfectly. Essentially, other, some teams I look and I, I think they should play X, and they play Y, and kind of like how, uh, what Mac is saying, you know what I mean, like Mac. Uh, Mac is saying how, you know, Gladiators should... Is it Mac? Someone said... Uh, play slow or some shit. It's less risky, I think rushing is better. Yeah, yeah. Someone said, in my opinion, Gladiators could have backed out. Oh, yeah. And, and I said that I wouldn't criticize it, but I explained why I think it was not as good as the other option, right? Or the other option was, like, probably more viable in this case. Uh, in Overwatch, there are many different options. A lot of the options are, you know, in my opinion, I think one is better. And generally speaking, I think objectively, we can say one is slightly better than the other. But there are a lot of options that are reasonable. Because people won't always react perfectly and play perfectly. And within a very short period of time, split second, where you have to make a decision, it's just best to follow a call. And there are many answers, right? There are like three or four answers that are essentially correct plays. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that the team is doing it wrong if they choose any of these three or four plays. Uh, but... If I think X is slightly like 2% better than other plays, right, they're always, coaches will always think like one play is slightly better, right? In, in, in their opinion, from the things they've learned, from the theories they've crafted. And I think Shock always do the X play. They always do the play that's like 2-3% better than other plays, even if they're other reasonable plays. Yeah, so at least however they're coached or how they think about the game is as close to what I think is perfect play, in my opinion, right? So, yeah. That's why they're scary as fuck. Sometimes I see Philly and I'm like, okay, they should do X. And then do Y. And then Y is like reasonable. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know what? That, that, that works too. Yeah, 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 that works too. Yeah, I saw that coming, but I think it works too. But to me, in my head, I'm like, yeah, but I feel X is better. But you know, I, yeah, whatever, man. It's the same. I think it's the same. But Shot will do X and then Philly will do Y. So yeah, it's hard to explain, but there have been like a lot of examples, like counters of reviews when I was looking through their vaults, uh, even in the last two years. <clears throat> Thanks for the follow, Falcon Bar. Hello. What are you planning to study? Big data, my friend. DP has a bonus for aggression and it's good. The team beats Shock, it's gonna be a good analysis. Yes, it will be a good analysis. So I'm very excited for Philly versus Shock, to be honest. Okay. I don't even... Okay. Sorry, I want to test out some stuff. I wish I have a second monitor. It's very annoying not having a second monitor. Yeah, because I have to like... Do everything manually and I have to out, tap, out like alternate tap. Okay. Where were we? Where were we? Let's continue with. Uh, okay. So one more map. I'm just. I just want to cover Busan, right? So we talk about re gladiators being rigid. Blah 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 blah. So in this map, I thought gladiators played better, 
And uh, so, I mean, and it's interesting to look at this as well because Gladi if you look at the composition between Gladiators and Outlaws, uh, one team is playing Poke again. Look at Outlaws, Babs at Gladiators playing Rush again. So remember what I, I said? I want to see Gladiators hold good flanking position. I want to see them make position that makes sense. I don't want to see their main support. I don't want to see like Shaz flanking as Baptiste or as Anna. Right? I want to see Shaz following the team. And I want to see the flanker being either Tracer or in this case, Gladiators is playing a ball. So if you play ball, I, I say that if they play Winston, Winston dies to Tracer, right? But the difference between ball is ball is way, way more survivable, right? Than, than, than fucking Winston. If you play Winston, you get poked a couple of times, you're like, no, I'm getting out. No, no more, right? You're just fucking dead. You just have to run away. You can't, you can't, you can't hold an anger by yourself. But if you play ball, you're, you, you have a fucking grapple shot. You don't, you don't travel everywhere you want to travel by jumping. You just fucking grapple. You're a fucking Tarzan. You know, you're like, woo, woo, woo. You know, you just go everywhere you want. So, and, and not only can is a ball more mobile than uh, Winston, he's also more, he can also survive way more. Right? He can take a lot more damage and take a lot more like punishment uh, from outlaws than Winston. So in this case, a 4-2 split makes sense. Right? This is not Winston, right? And we don't have like, you know, Shaz was holding a, a solo angle by himself and he didn't do anything as uh, Anna. We don't see Shaz like making some like weird angle play now. We see Shaz like following his team. So this is good. This is good positioning. I like this positioning from, uh, uh, from Gladiators. So I'm looking at this positioning and, and in my eye, as long as Gladiators don't fuck up anything and if Vito doesn't make a pick, Right in my eyes, I think Gladiators has a chance of winning the first fight. So this is what I mean. Right, even though Gladiators' composition might not be like meta meta composition, a lot of times if you understand how to play composition, you can still win with like composition that are not like meta. You don't need to always play the mirror composition of what you think is the best composition. Sometimes cheesing a little bit, if but with a solid composition, you can still win. There's so a lot of people say, "Oh, I need to play meta. I need to play meta." I'm like, "You're a fucking diamond team, right? You want to win this diamond tournament." You don't play the fucking meta. The meta is so hard to play. X whatever that meta is. I was like, okay, who's your best player? Oh, we have a Farah one trick, and the Farah one trick is playing McCree. Fuck you, you dude. Like your Farah is a fucking diamond, and you play McCree just because the the, the meta is McCree. You know? you can fucking yeah. No, you're not a McCree player. Your McCree is probably playing at go. You're playing a go McCree in a, a diamond tournament. No, play the fucking Farah. Like, I don't care if the meta is not Farah. Just play the Farah because mechanically uh, speaking, you know you're better at Farah, right? So meta isn't always the best. Meta is often the best. And being able to play meta gives you many options because I, the teams will be scared. They're like, hmm, is Outlaws going to play meta or are they going to play some wonky shit? So we have to prep against blue. If you only prep against mirror and Outlaws come up with a wonky shit but strong wonky shit, you lose. But if you only prep against wonky shit, you can't prep against wonky shit essentially. So the wonky shit at least has to be reasonably strong, right? You can't just play whatever comp you like and you're like, oh yeah, John says meta is not important. So we will play Torbjorn Symmetra or uh, Torbjorn fucking uh, Symmetra fucking like, I don't know, Ash or some shit. And it's a shit comp essentially. But uh, uh, a gladiator's composition is strong. Like it, it, it has a lot of like strong characters. Yes, Tracer strong in this map. Uh, Lucio Baptiste with Ryan always a great pick. A uh, ball way better than Winston on this map. So they have a I, they have a decent character. They also have seventy six, which uh, seventy six is the one I'm like a little bit unsure of because if Hydration plays Orisa, seventy six actually going to do jack shit. But they do have a Lucio, so seventy six is going to be able to take decent position. So all in all, gladiator's composition. Perfectly fine in winning outlaws, right? If they they have a ch they have a great chance in beating outlaws, and I really like the position that they take the four two movement because it is way better position than like the previous map, like way better. So, so I want to see I want to see the pins, I want to see a uh, ball power driving, and I want to see a uh, gladiators rushing. And this is already very different from the first map, right? Uh, one thing I'm unhappy with is I don't know why the Baptist is over here. See. This is the kind of thing that I look and I'm like quite unhappy. Like I, I, I keep wondering why Shaz is like playing alone. Let me see whether he could have changed things. Could he not rotate? What? Okay, so Chess is splitting up again. I, yeah, I. I yeah. I really want him to join the team. I think Shaz should already be like somewhere like here. Yeah, like splitting up like that against unlost composition. They have a boy and then a tracer. Uh, it's kind of lucky that the tracer is not close enough. Oh, here's the tracer. But they're not going to sync up their dive well enough. So Baptiste is going to survive. And also he has a tracer with him. So it's a little bit different from playing alone. Lucy is going to die. Yeah, I actually don't like the Baptiste playing there. So even though I like their 4-2 split, right? I thought they could have engaged earlier. Let me see again. I 
I think I think if Baptiste was with the Rhine right now, they should just engage if the Baptiste was over here. I think Big Goose just speed boost right now. 3, 2, 1, speed boost. Boom, boom, boom. And Baptiste just get be in the speed boost and heal his tank as he hops towards the enemy. And then Kefster. Uh, Kefster attacks this way. And then the ball, right, it just hooks, roar, and slam. So you have like essentially like two angles, right? You have a pincer. You have the one team rushing this way. Fuck. Yeah. Every single time chess split up, it always ends up with Gladiator's loss. We've seen it so many times in the previous map. Uh, I'm not sure why. I don't know whether Gladiator's doing a set play again, because I sus suspect they're doing a set play again. I think the ball is playing somewhere like here. I think they're trying to play like here, and I think, like, I don't know, maybe they're doing a set play like something like that. Like that. But uh, too many angles, man. Like, I, I really don't like this four split stuff. Just make it simple. Uh, ball and Tracer flanks. Uh, the rest of the team pushes and, you know, the, the main spot can heal each other. So, like I said, I don't know whether this is a set play, but it, it's weird. A lot of weird decisions by Shaz, and if this is a mechanical mistake and Shaz just had a bad day, because I know Shaz tweeted something like, I played like shit today, so if it's not a set play and it just had a bad day, yeah, you know, understandable, all players have a bad day, but definitely some of the decisions that Shaz made in this game was weird, and I don't know whether it's like a coaching decision or like an individual decision. So, uh, they're not actually going to succeed this fight, even though like they have good positioning, right? If you look at this, uh, if the Tracer was actually closer, like this Tracer was actually over here, the Baptist was over here, it's actually good position. However, the problem is that two people are over here, right? And, and the Tracer is essentially, instead of setting up for the, the enemy's backline, this Tracer is in a position to peel for Baptist. And essentially, a Tracer should almost never be peeling, right? It should be the Lucio peeling, it should be the, the rest of the team peeling. I, I, I see no reason why... Uh, Big Goose should be like uh, peeling. Uh, sorry, I, I see no reason why Kefster should be focusing on peeling because if he focuses on peeling and these two people are out of the fight and these two people are out of the fight, you have these four. You have these four people fighting this. These four people, is not a fight. It's not a fight that you can actually can win. Uh, the Sunny Six actually does nothing against the Shales, uh, or at least against the Sigma, not easily. And it's actually quite hard to kill the Zen. You do need the Tracer. The Tracer is very, very uh, influential and very powerful against the Babs. And Tracer is essentially the the, the core carry of uh, Gladiator's composition against Outlaw's composition. So I don't like I don't like the way that our, uh, Gladiator is playing because of uh, big goose uh, because of Shaz's position, which of course forces the the tracer, which forces a uh, caster to take a, a, a not so good position to peel for big goose. But like I said, I don't know whether it's an individual mistake or like a set play. So they lose the first fight. Shaz pulling the round rosy flank. How do you think the two rosters match up? What? Which two rosters? Weird champ spamming it twice. Yeah, come back. That friend's gonna say let it grow. Elsa Fissure cosplay. What's Kefster doing? He's not stopping the video rotation. Nah, I mean, they, they gladiators can't really challenge the video. They just gotta play really fast and kill them. I don't think gladiators can actually like send a lot of people for the video. Uh, I think OG just slams down on like fucking outlaws, right? Backline, try to kill the Zen as quickly as possible, force the lamb. And then in the middle of the fight, they can go for Widow. I don't think they want to go for Widow that early. Also, if you notice, right, Widow is a... Rotating along with uh, the rest of Outlaws because Widow knows if he plays alone, he's gonna die to the ball. So Widow is not playing alone. He's gonna play. He, if you look at the, the previous fight, Widow actually played with the team, I believe. See, Widow actually played uh, generally with the team. Right? You don't see Widow holding like a single angle uh, away from the team. Why? Because of the matchup. Gladiators has a tracer. Gladiators has a ball. Right? He can't play like that alone. So he's not playing like that alone. He's playing close to his team. So the job of Gladiator is actually not to mark the widow because it's impossible to reach the widow or to focus the widow. The job of Gladiator is to f like fuck up outlaws when they're in, since they're in a clump with the tracer and ball, which they didn't do because they were protecting shares, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna speed up this review a little bit because we. We have covered a lot of core concepts and I don't want to repeat myself, so we're going to take a look at just uh, Gladiators. We're going to speed up every single fight, because a lot of the things that happens in the next few fights, we have covered in the previous map. So let's see whether we can complete this in, in record time. So, I told you guys I really like the 4-2 split from Gladiators just now. 
And what I want to see is the ball and Tracer playing together. I don't want to see Tracer protecting Shaz. I want to see Shaz playing with his team right here, so that not only can he sp get speed boosted by Goose, he can play in proximity and Goose can help him out. Right? This is what I want to see. This kind of love between the, the, the Lucio and the Shaz and, and, and uh, the big Goose and Shaz and Ryan is what I know Gladiators is known for, right? So I want to see this shit, right? This is looking good. As long as Shaz doesn't split up, I like this. Uh, so that's the dive. Let's, go, let's get a closer look, right? Let's get a closer look. So let's slow it down to maybe 0 0.5. 0 0.7 maybe. So nice play on the Zen. Tracer is setting up for the Zen, right? So this is already looking good. Like we know, we can't see who is winning yet. If you look at Outlaws, they still have a lot of HP. But this is finally, like, even before, as a coach, I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is a good engage from Gladiators, right? Uh, Gladiators' chance of winning went from, like, maybe, like, 40% to, like, 70-80%. This is great play from Gladiators. So I'm going to look at maybe Cavs the POV. We're going to slow it down to 0.7. Let's see whether he gets the kill on the Zen. Let's get the kill on the Zen. Does someone want to hold the angle? Change the position for the Zen, because he knows the Zen is not here. Ball and the Tracer going for the Zen, right? This is what I'm talking about. They don't need to go for the Widow. The Widow is not playing alone. Hard to go for the Widow. If the Widow plays alone, they can go for the Widow. But they're not playing, he's not playing alone. So he doesn't want to go for the Widow. Just go for the Zen. Force the force the lamb, force everything. Go for the Zen. Tracer and Ball should never bother peeling for Shaz. The only person that should be peeling for Shaz is two people. Big Goose and Shaz himself. Shaz peels for himself. No one else peels for Shaz. Okay. Uh, send me on Discord, I think. I can, I can. What? I don't think I've got any message from someone, though. Mainly, I'm slow in respond, but I've generally responded. Okay. LH Claudia should pee for shares, charge backwards. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Linksa is getting kills, but, you know, but this is, I know Linksa got two kills, right? But essentially, if you look at, like, the, 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 the positioning, right, it's a brawl. Essentially, in a brawl, yeah, in a brawl, it, 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 it looks good for gladiators, essentially. I'm gonna look at caster some more, but essentially it's, a, it's, it's, it's at least it, it, at least the fight is relatively even. Oh, nice try, the power spawn. So this, this, the reason why they can actually, oh, nice, nice, nice fundamentals. The reason why this fight is actually close and, and you know, gladiators is having a good one is because, you know, they actually set up the fight well. So gladiators should win this. And the best thing is that gladiators is gonna win it, or at least they need to try to win this, before the point ticks up to 90%. Okay, this is good. So the previous map, if you guys remember the previous round, uh, Outlaws was at, I think, 90-something percent, right? 96% or something. And Gladiators had to win, and they can't lose. But now Gladiators has breathing space. Because they won the second fight. They did not win the third fight. They won the second fight. So they do have a bit of breathing space, right? And this is really important for Outlaws. Sorry, important for Gladiators. Because if they get up to 99% and they lose that fight, they can come back and they try to, you know, hold it and, and try to win the last fight. And you really, really need to cap the point before before even 80%. Like, 70-something percent you have time. But once it goes 80 and above, generally speaking, you might be able to touch the point, but you have very bad positioning when you touch the point. 70-something, you can touch the point with decent positioning. So, yeah. And the reason why you want more time when you want to touch the point is because uh, it allows you to use your ultimate and allows you to position before you touch the point otherwise you're literally just rushing the point to touch the point and then any team that does that will lose to any team that already has a chance to set up right you're already in a disadvantage oh i remember this one caster fat this one i think this was the one you're talking about right mac okay so ah, individual mistakes maybe from chess and from caster as well so you know hydration uh outlaws very hard for Outlaws, actually. Uh, it's actually quite hard for Outlaws to retake this fight. Because even though Gladiators can send their Baptiste, uh, their Boar and Tracer, right? If Gladiators holds on point like that, so if Gladiators holds like that, see? Like this. Like this. Spread out. Not playing close to point, but spread out over this area. Very hard for Hydration to approach. Because if Hydration, how is Hydration going to approach them? Very hard. Wherever he approaches, he's going to get punished quite heavily. So we can look at Hydration trying to set up for the for the dive, but uh, wait, is it this one? Let me see. Oh no, it's not this one, it's this one. Wait, is it this one?
Oh no, not this one. Sorry, my bad. The next one. Yeah, yeah. This one was just caster. <laughs> this one was just hydration. This one was just caster. Making a doo doo. Wait, what? Let's look at this again. Caster make a mistake here. Ball. Yeah, so Gladiators actually should just play slow, actually. After... After Caster dies, right, they should just play slow. Yeah, because remember what we talked about? If it wasn't 90-something percent in the previous fight, we said if it wasn't 90-something percent, Gladiators just, want to, Gladiators just want to play slow. Furthermore, if they rush Outlaws now, they know Outlaws have Sigma out. So Sigma is just out and Big Goose wouldn't have Sun Barrier in time. So they want to play slow, spread out, and Big Goose wants to get his Sun Barrier as quickly as possible. Right? And, and Outlaws would probably still win this, but Gladiators wants to make sure that you know, it's, they, 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 they lose this point with like, I don't know, like, 50-60%. If they lose the fight at 50-60%, I think Gladiators is happy with the results. If they lose this fight in the next 20%, they are not. It's, it's bad play. So a couple of things I don't like is how this ball went here. I don't think this is a good play. He's gonna get flashbang and take a lot of damage. Oh, he actually survived. Okay, nice. Okay, so both tanks just need to survive. But I, I don't I don't think these tanks should be playing here. I know uh, Irish Cloudy push up to save uh, the ball, but they should try to fall back behind the statue and use the statue as LOS. So let's see what happens. Also, they want to play closer because they want to get play closer to their their, their Lucio and their Baptiste. If they play too far like that, right, uh, and they take a lot of damage, it's way harder for Shaz to heal the Rhine. So he wants the Rhine to play closer to him behind the statue where he can use the statue as cover and much easier for Baptiste to heal. Okay, Irish Cloudy threw that. <laughs> Let me see. Did he just get booked? Oh, I mean, it's not really his fault. Yeah, it's not really his fault. Because he pushed out to protect uh, the, 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 the the ball. And he started pushing out straight away and he got Yeah, it's not his fault, actually. He actually protected OG. I don't think it's his fault. Kefter, true, essentially. He was careless and he got picked. Uh, but not OG's fault. Uh, not, not, not Eric Claudio. If you want to blame someone, you should blame like OG. OG shouldn't be there. See, Kefter, Eric Claudio's show is already very low, right? Eric Claudio is playing in a good spot. This is good positioning from Claudio. This is good position. He's waiting for his shield to recuperate and shit. Bo OG should not play aggressively. This is... Okay, Kefster die, right? He, he wants... It's actually OG wants to set up because he, he thought that Kefster was going to flank or some shit. So he wanted to set up, but... Kefster died, and he should not go anymore. No, 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 Yeah. Did he know the Macri was there? Wait, I want to see. Because from his line of sight, it feels like he couldn't see the Macri. Because I feel like if he knew the Macri was there, he wouldn't have gone. Did he not see the Macri? Because Boar generally don't dive the Macris. And the line of sight is weird. Let me see. Wait, is this... Is this a PV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he actually saw the Macri. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I don't think he actually saw the Macri. Ha <laughs> ha. He thought there was only Baptiste. Because, yeah, he should power drive his own... Oh my god. It's like an illusion, it's like a magic trick. Guys, look at this, look at this. I didn't even notice this. In the first time I was analyzing this vault, I didn't even notice this. I, th I thought he just like, I thought OG was just like a bad ball. And I remember watching this, I was like, okay, so OG is not a great ball. See, this is POV, I'm not looking at third person. He's way, he, he blocks the Macri just nicely. Look at that, he, he, can't, he actually didn't see the Macri. See, it blocks the Macri. When he kicked him out, it blocked the Macri again. It blocked the Macri, and he's. Pause right, he commits and he's like, ah, Jesus fucking Christ, the Macri is here, and he flashbangs him, and he lost HP. And he want to take too much damage, so LG Cloudy pushed out to save him. And he got booked, and he died. So, I would blame OG, actually. It's an Android IQ positioning. Yeah. Linkser playing Macri here is not a great idea. Uh, I think Macri is fine, actually. Yeah, I think Macri is fine. Widow is not good enough. Because the enemy has a ball and Tracer, and they are rushing you anyway, so you don't want to play them. So what else can you play? I would suggest, like, Tracer, uh, Sombra, but... You can't play Sombra. Alright, Sombra is bad. You can't play Echo. Echo is 
bad. Anyway, you can't play Echo. Echo's not that great here. If you, if you can't play Dive, Echo's not that great. So who else can you play? You don't want to play Mei. Mei doesn't do enough. I'm retaking the point. So what else can you play? Let me think. Mm. Okay, let's, let's, let's not jump so quickly to Macri. Let's think. So I think Macri is the best. Macri is actually not bad. <clears throat> I need to look up the list because I, I haven't slept the entire night, so my brain ain't working. Ash is not good enough. Mercury is the best. Yeah, Mercury is easily the best because of Paul. If they're playing Winston, uh, he can play 76. Yeah. Mercury is the best here. <clears throat> also, it's also a Mustang of Comfort. Linkser is a Mercury Widowmaker player. That is essentially his main role in who's turn out loss. Yeah, this is not great for uh, Gladiators actually. <sighs> Wait, Goose used his ultimate? Traded with Sigma out. Yeah. So they do have a chance to touch the point, but I think that loss, even though I say I blame OG, was just unfortunate, I think, because OG didn't see. So it's kind of unlucky. One, If that happened, I wouldn't like say that guy is not a good ball player, it's just not good. But all the other mistakes that Gladiators make early in this game, in the first map, was not good. This map, I think they were a little bit unlucky. But uh, I mean, they still made mistakes in the first few fights, but they lost. So, yeah. There's only one fight of note that I thought Gladiators played well, and then Capster fed right after that. That was the fight where Gladiators split 4-2 and they pincered and fight, right? But then Capster immediately died, so... Yeah, this one. He forced the recall, right? He shouldn't, like, right now he shouldn't commit to the Tracer. He should just, recall, recall, recall! Yeah, like, he, he should have known the enemy was the holding to anger. He needs to know that the enemy was holding, like, here and here, right? So after he fights the Tracer, either he retreats this way, yeah, he should just retreat this way. After you force the thing, you recall, and then you decide whether you can kill the Tracer or you just move back. Because even if you waste the enemy's Tracer time, it's good enough. If you waste the Tracer time, you're essentially delaying the enemy, because the en you just need to mark. Remember I talked about this before? If you are a Tracer on the defense team, you control and mark space. If you are a Tracer on the offensive team, most of the time you want to aggro into space. Because you need to break the enemy's point advantage and position. So even if let's say Kepster, yeah, but Kepster is generally a very aggressive tracer, regardless of whether he's uh, he's playing contenders or Overwatch League. But I think here he made a mistake. So lots of matter. There's a lot of scouting done by off tank and supports. In this workcom now, has this role extended more to players in general, especially with the amount of map control, general map control? Uh, I mean. Gladiators can, anyone can scout here. The Tracer probably scouts along with OG. I mean, scouting is generally a concept. It, no one needs to like, act, definitely do it. Depending on the, the composition, you, different people can change. Not really a very complicated concept. Just whoever can do it should do it. That's all. The most mobile person do it. Queen needs to be better at uh, holding space and taking it. Well, Ash technically needs some holding power in ages to, for her to get value. Yeah, because the thing about Ash is, if Ash doesn't have like space already, Ash on defense is generally much more powerful than on attack. For Macri, he's good attack and defense. Probably a little bit better. Yeah, he's a good attack and defense. You must remember that on defense, all characters are worse. Oh, sorry, on attack, all characters are worse. Because the enemy always gets to set up on defense, right? So no matter which character you play, all characters are worse. But some characters are worse than other characters. For example, Widowmaker is not good at taking space. Yeah, when the enemy already has position, they can choose to fight you. They can even choose to spawn camp, right? So for example, if, if the enemy already has the point on defense and you're like trying to walk out, the enemy can choose to engage here or here. So you don't really have much of a choice and you can't really like play how you want to play. Because technically, the, how we don't want to play is your team fights over here and then the Widowmaker play, like, okay, maybe not here, but Widowmaker plays here and kill everyone. But the thing is, your team wouldn't even get to this position because essentially the enemy teams know you want to do that. So the enemy team will fight very early. 
And that's what happens in dive many times. If you play Widowmaker and the enemy plays like Tracer Sombra, that's what the Tracer Sombra dive comp will try to do against the Widowmaker comp. Fight as early as possible before the Widow has time to set up. Essentially, all snipers' weakness are that they need a little bit of setup, like you said, right? They need a little bit of setup. And on attack, you can't really set up. You need to break. So it's a catch 22. You need to break uh, the point to get set up. But you can't set up unless you break the point advantage from the defending team. And then, you know, it's catch 22. So most of the time, you play like stuff like Tracer, Sombra. Even like you use cooldowns like Reaper TP in, you know, TP behind the enemy to break, force the enemy to look like three, four people look at the Reaper so you can break and push in, that kind of thing. So all these are like basic breaking point advantage play. And snipers are just not that as good. People sometimes still do it, depending on meta and on maps. But a lot, on a lot of occasions, people just don't do it. Okay. Huh. <sighs> Isn't Ash better to do with Lucio and Mayball? Ash is not good against Ball, by the way. Ash is not good against Ball. Ash, uh, against Ball, you need some CC. So the reason why Sombra May is considered like counters for Ball, and in Roadhog, Roadhog can hook, uh, Sombra can hack, May can freeze. Even Brigitte is decent because he can bash. Uh, any characters that doesn't have a, like, a good enough lockdown against Ball, essentially Ball runs around for free. So Ash is not considered good against Ball. A Macri is considered decent against ball. Like a soft, I wouldn't say a counter, but like a soft counter. A decent matchup, I guess. Because he has flashbang, so CC. Okay. And uh, this is, I come to the end of my review. Uh, I hope you guys learned a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's Gladiators versus uh, Houston Outlaws.